Hey guys, welcome back to the Pulse Sports Pregame Show. I'm Zachary Franks. I'm Nathan Madden. And for those of you who are wondering, uh, Hunter and Joseph cannot be with us for the pregame show. They will be with us for the game tonight, however, so we'll have Nathan helping out on the pregame show. Oh, yeah. Now, moving on to tonight's game, we have BHP at Rien in a good rivalry game and a good region matchup. It should be a really good one. Um, BHP coming off a huge win over Seneca last week at homecoming. Final score was 61-38. to 38. The Bears just blew them out in the second half. Um, Rian coming off a loss to Daniel, 35-9. to 9. Of course, Daniel beating everybody. Hey guys, welcome back to the Pulse Sports Pregame Show. I'm Zachary Franks. I'm Nathan Madden. And for those of you who are wondering, uh, Hunter and Joseph cannot be with us for the pregame show. They will be with us for the game tonight, however, so we'll have Nathan helping out on the pregame show. Oh, yeah. Now moving on to tonight's game, we have BHP at Rien in a good rivalry game and a good region matchup. It should be a really good one. Um, BHP coming off a huge win over Seneca last week at homecoming. Final score was 61-38. to The Bears just blew them out in the second half. Um, Rian coming off a loss to Daniel, 35-9. to Of course, Daniel beating everybody. BHP, um, I think they're, what, 5-4 and four now? 4-4? Four and four? No, I know. 4-4. Um, I think we're 4-4. Four and four. Okay, so BHP at four and four, Ren at three and five, coming into tonight's game. Um, so it should be a really good one to watch. Um, but before we get into that, we want to first talk about some of the other games from last week. Our game of the week last week, we were at Palmetto as they hosted Berea, and it was Berea coming home top, forty-two thirty-five. Kind of surprising everyone there. Uh, Bulldogs putting together a very nice season for them. Um, Carolina was playing at Powdersville last week. It was the Patriots remaining undefeated and winning there with no surprise, 56 to 12. Um, as we said, Daniel beat Rand last week, 35-9, and BHP beat Seneca, 61-38. And Southside beat Blue Ridge last week, 36 to 26. The uh, Tigers remaining undefeated in region play. Blue Ridge still looking for their first win in region play. All right, so that's it for last week's games. Now moving into this week's games. Um, Starting out with our game of the week, BHP at Wren. Of course, we think that one's going to be a really good one. Um, some other games across the region, we have Powdersville at Blue Ridge. Um, should be a, an intriguing game there. Palmetto at Southside. Uh, Mustangs are going to be without their starting quarterback, Reagan Davenport, and possibly their starting one of their best receivers, Sean Lindsey, both of which were injured in last week's game against uh, Berea. So, and they got a, a very tough opponent in Southside, a team that has won three straight. Um... Berea will be playing at Carolina, and um, Pendleton will be playing at Seneca, and that's it for this week's game. So, um, pretty interesting week of um, high school football from across our two regions. Um, we got some games that look like they should be pretty competitive, and we got some that look way, way, way far-fetched for these two teams to win, particularly um, Blue Ridge, Powdersville and Blue Ridge, Berea and Carolina as well. Um, so some notes on this week's games. Uh, BHP is 4-4, four and four, Wren 3-5. and five. The Bears average 28.8 points per game, where Wren averages 27.4 points per game. So you cannot get any closer than these two teams are right now. So that should be a really intriguing matchup to watch. Um, but before we talk more about that, we want to first get some predictions, starting out with Pendleton at Seneca. So, Nathan, what's your prediction for this game? Seneca... 30, Pendleton, 14. Yeah, um, Pendleton really, really struggling so far this year. Um, Seneca looking to come off their that blowout loss to BHP last week. Um, I'm going to have to say uh, I'll take Seneca here 56-28. to 28. 
Um, Hunter and Joseph's predictions were Hunter took uh, Seneca 42-14 and Joseph took Seneca 52-3. So, um, yeah, it looks like a tough matchup for the Bulldogs again. Um, Seneca trying to get back on track. Um, our next game, uh, how about Berea at Carolina? Berea at Carolina. I take Berea 14, Carolina 6. Um, okay, so yeah, I I mean, I think this one's going to be a blowout. I really do. Um, Carolina is 0-7, Berea is 4-4. Four four. They just beat Palmetto last week. Of course, Palmetto's not the best, but still a good bit better than I would say Carolina is. Um, so I'm going to take um, Berea here 56-7. Um, Hunter um, and Joseph's predictions. Hunter took Berea 52-7, and Joseph took Berea 46-10. All right, next score, next game, we have Palmetto at Southside. So, Nathan, who do you think is going to win here? I take not Palmetto. <laughs> I think the score will be about 13-28. So, 28-13, Southside. Um, I'm going to go... Very, very similar to that score. I got Southside winning about 30 to 13. Um, I would usually say Palmetto here, but after the, the game last week where they lost to Berea at home, and then on top of that losing their quarterback, I just don't think Palmetto's going to have enough to win this game tonight. Um, Hunter uh, took a little bit of a closer game. He got Southside winning 34-28, and Joseph had Southside winning 42-28. to So, yeah, um, that one should be pretty interesting to watch. Uh, so this next game, we have Powdersville at Blue Ridge. So um, this one does not look to be all that competitive. So, uh, Nathan, give me your final score for this one. 60 to nothing. Man, yeah, Powdersville's really, really good this year. I'm still undefeated. Um, Blue Ridge really struggling so far. Um, I think Blue Ridge is going to be able to do a little bit more than 60 to nothing. I got Powdersville winning, however, though, 52-14. Hunter has um, Powdersville winning 52-7. And Joseph has Powdersville winning forty-eight nothing. So yeah, um, does not look to be all that close of a game. Patriots trying to stay unbeaten. Definitely their best season in their school's history so far up to this point. I'm telling you, Thomas Williams though for Powdersville, that guy is an impact player if, you, if there ever was one. I mean, that guy can just run all over you. So hard to bring down to. Um, and then finally, um, our game of the week: BHP at Wren. Um, so this one we think is going to be a really good game. BHP coming off a huge win over Seneca, just run ran all over them in the second half, scoring over 60 points. Uh, Ren coming off a pretty lopsided loss to Daniel, 35-9. to um, But one thing I will say, the key to this game would be, is what quarterback shows up for Ren. Gavin Owens is a great freshman quarterback, but the thing is that he's a freshman. And he'll make freshman mistakes a lot of times. You you can see that when you when he plays. So if he's able to avoid the mistakes, I think that um, Ren stands a really good chance in this game because they have the capability to throw it. BHP's pass defense, uh, they've kind of struggled at points this year. So um, I think it should be a pretty good game. But um, you know that's that's a key to look out for. Um, impact player though for Ren that's um, outside of Gavin Owens, you got to worry about. Tanazi Rowe on the offensive side as well as Malachi Hill, but definitely the biggest two impact players are on the defensive side of the ball, and that's Malik Woodruff and Nick Morgan, both of which are very talented recruits um, sought after. Uh, Malik Woodruff can just, I mean, he's a great defensive back. Nick Morgan literally seems like he makes every tackle for the Hurricanes, so yeah, he should be a pretty interesting matchup. And then uh, BHP, I'll be honest with you, um, I'm going to let Nathan take this one. I've only really watched BHP play one time, so who are some guys to look out for for the Bears? Uh, Devada Billups, our receiver, he's really good. He can catch over three people. It feels like it. He did that a couple games ago. Uh, our running back core is a three-headed dragon. We don't really just use one running back. They split the runs, so you got to watch out for them. On the defensive side, we got a lockdown corner, Rozelle, and... Our big D lineman, Jemias Glenn. Yeah, Rozell Scott, um, we uh, mentioned him. Went head to head with Tank Slade in the game we had earlier against Powdersville and just shut him down. Tank went out, went, went out of catch in that game. Of course, Tank Slade, a very good receiver. Um, uh, so, yeah, it should be pretty interesting to watch. Um, so, overall, who do you think is going to win this game tonight, Nathan? Of course, you know, yeah, BHP, BHP, BHP football player here. So, uh, BHP is going to take it uh, 52 to 54. So yeah, very. He's got a shootout, fifty-four to fifty-two. Um, 
I don't think it's going to be quite as high scoring, but I still think that I think DHB is going to pull it out. I think they have tons of momentum coming off the game against Seneca. I mean, looking at the numbers, these two teams are basically dead even. Um, both teams, you know, they've both lost to the same teams. Ren and BHB both lost to Hannah. They both lost to Powdersville. Um, so I think this is a really even match. Um, of course, Ren, you know, they're three and five, but if you look at the teams they've played, it's ridiculous. Their strength of schedule. BHP did not play an easy schedule either, though. Um, so, but I'm going to take BHP in this game. I think that the Bears have the momentum, and that's what's going to pull them out. I got them winning 34 to 31. So, yeah, um, close one, but I think the Bears are going to ride their momentum to victory tonight. Um, as for Hunter, um, Hunter's got the score 35-31 uh, in favor of Wren. Um, I think he was just kind of saying one of the keys I said about the past game for the Hurricanes being um, – but Gavin Owens kind of, you know, what Gavin Owens shows up is, I think, the difference. Um, and I think he has been able to throw the ball and pulling out late. Um, Joseph, though, um, I, Joseph kind of agrees with me and Nathan. He thinks BHB is riding the momentum. He's got the Bears winning 32-28. to 28. Um, So, yeah, it should be a really good game. Um, like we said, pass game um, is something to watch out for. Um, but that's going to about, I think, wrap it up for – us today. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. I'm Zachary Franks. I'm Nathan Madden. And we'll see you tonight at the game. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wren High School for the side of tonight's game. Um, before we get started, first, the captains for tonight's uh, game. First, for the visiting BHP Bears, we have number 49, Reese Pruitt. Number 9, Trevon DeVoe. Number uh, 43, Anthony Brantley. And number 24, Jemias Glenn. For the Hurricanes, we have number 3, Tanazi Rowe. Number 32, Lucas Reed. Number or number 77, Caleb Carter. And number 16, Nick Morgan are our tonight's captains. Beautiful night for football. Sun starting to set over the horizon. Beautiful, beautiful night. Good weather. as both teams get set to take the field. And here come the Bears. This is a really big game because this year is a region game and this is going to be uh, Yeah, a good ACTC rivalry game. A lot of BHP people here tonight, as expected. This, this Bears fans to travel really well. Second win over Rand tonight. Yeah, this this game has a lot to do with the playoff rankings here. Cause whoever wins here most likely will get uh, second in uh, uh, this region. And the Hurricanes take the field, run into the smoke <clears throat> here. Got about a minute until we're ready to start play. Like I said, good crowd. Ren Faithful still filing in. Getting pretty crowded over here at the BHP side. I might would even say they're pretty equal. Uh, fan <laughs> yeah, wise. fan wise. Yeah. Like we said, BHP fans do travel really, really well to the, these games. As the Bears um, will be kicking. So Ren will start the game with the football. They will receive. On to kick for BHP. Looks like that is number 84, Peter Batoni. Get deep for the Bears. We're expecting a really good game here tonight. Back deep for the Hurricanes. Um, we'll have number three, Tanazi Rowe. I think that's Tanazi Rowe. Uh, that's, uh, no, check that, number seven, Trevon West. And number four, C.J. Willingham, back deep for the Hurricanes. And we're just about ready to go. And we're good, off. Good kick, uh, but the whistles will blow. 
And they'll have to redo it. Uh, like Beach, we might have been offsides on the kickoff. So, so the um, Bears will pack it up five yards, and they'll kick from the 35 now. You have to re-kick it here. Yeah. So, we haven't had a second tick off the clock yet. We've already had our first penalty. Might not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, that's not a sign for things to come for these two teams. Yeah, but historically, neither team's been a really uh, heavily penalized team, yeah. really. Yeah, these are two of the most disciplined and honestly, two of the most historically best football programs in the state, especially upper state. BHP has definitely been turning up their offense. Um, they had zero turnovers against Seneca. This is the second game of they've done this this season. Squib kick fielded by number one, Trey Horn, and Horn is going to get out to a close the um, – 44-yard line. That's where Ramble set up first and 10. And he'll be taken own. down by number 24, Jemias Glenn. And our very own Nathan Madden also was in the game. All right, so Ren will take the field first and 10 from their own 44-yard line. Gavin Owens is heading out to the field as the quarterback again. Ren does uh, occasionally run the two-quarterback system with Owens and Horn. Owens will see the bulk of the snaps, however. They'll come out with four wide receivers, two on both sides of the ball. Check that. It looks like they're going to switch into trips to the right here in the shotgun. First down, Owens is going to look to throw here on first down. He's going to fire one across the middle. That's too high and incomplete. And that's intended for number 83, Landon Skelton. He had a lot of pressure on him, that one. And that's going to bring up second and 10 from the 44. I think it looked like he had a very good uh, grip on the ball there. Yeah, that's a tight window trying to fit it in there and just um, couldn't quite squeeze it in there. They'll come out three wide receivers now on the shotgun. Play action. Owens going to throw again. Fires one across the middle. Intercepted. intercepted. It's picked up by the Bears. That is number eight. Number two. Number, number two. two. J and heading down across the 10th to the five, the five, Amari Jackson on the interception for BHP, and the Bears will set up first and goal. He threw it right at BHP. BHP starting this one off right. Remember uh, what we said in the pregame show, Gavin Owens is a great quarterback, but he'll make freshman mistakes sometimes. He is a freshman, and that might have been one of them right there. Not all that great of a read, and a big, big play from Amari Jackson and BHP. Let's see if BHP can capitalize on offense. They'll come out first and goal from the six. A.J. Pellington taking the field at quarterback. He'll have two wide receivers to the left. It looks like they're kind of in the wildcat formation. This is kind of a formation BHP likes to run in uh, tight situations. Now hand it off your right in the gut and heading it to the end zone. Touchdown, BHP. That That's is number 11, Deterius Burns. And the Bears get on the board first at 6 nothing early. Less than 30 seconds into the ball game. It's a fast start for BHP, riding that momentum off their huge win over Seneca last week. <clears throat> and the Bears strike really early. It's on the tip of the PAT. We'll have number 38. That is Zach Morrison. This has been something we've been talking about. It just took uh, – we knew BHP had the talent to do these uh, types of things. It just took them a little confidence boost. Um, and they kind of got that later on in the season. And Morrison's kick is up, and it is going to be good. 7 11 31 left in the first quarter. Your score BHP 7, Rhea nothing. All right, um, coming on to kick for BHP, we'll have uh, Bertoni. Back deep for Wren. Number seven, Trevon West. Number four, CJ Willingham. Bertoni's been a very busy man these past couple of weeks. That's about the perfect start 61 there points last week for BHP's offense, just an explosion. That was about the perfect start there for BHP. Coming, up, coming off that... Uh, turnover right into a touchdown. Yeah, it took one play to get into the end zone. 
Looks like VHP is playing with a lot of uh, momentum here. Good kick to be floated around the 11 by West. West has got space. He's got some good blocking. And he's brought down across the 40. Mark about the 42. That's where uh, Rim will set up first and 10 as Owens will look to come out and avenge the interception he threw on his first drive. Here comes out, here comes out Rim's offense hoping to uh, what, they, what they did on that last drive. Yeah, the Ram will come out in the shotgun, stack wide receivers, two on both sides of the ball. Flags fly. See what the call here is. Most likely a false start. Offsides on the defense. So that'll move forward five yards. And it's going to be um, first and five now from the 47 for Ren. Uh, I don't want to say that was because of the crowd noise, but it's very loud here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the band, BHP's band's got it going early on in the game. Four wide receivers in the shotgun. Stack wide receivers, same formation as they had. They hand it off here, Malachi Hill. Hill's got a good block, and he's going to be brought down across midfield. Near the first down marker, we'll see if they give it to him. It depend on the spot. It looks like they'll mark him a couple inches short here. And the BHP territory brought down at the uh, bare, looks like a 48-yard line. Second down and less than a yard. Stack wide receivers in the shotgun again. Hand it off to Hill again, and he's, he's stopped in the up. backfield. And that's what number 24, right Jemias Glenn. Jemias is another one of those players we talked about on defense. That's uh, uh, BHP's defensive strong shoots is their offensive line. And Jemias Glenn is uh, obviously the leader on their line. Yeah, and uh, he's, he's showing that so far this game. Brought all the way back down to the uh, 49 of Wren. It's going to be third down for the Hurricanes. So come out four wide receivers in the shotgun. Owens takes the snap. He's going to look to throw here. Fires one across the middle. That's complete. Out to number one, Trey Horn. And Horn across the 40 to about the 38-yard line. That's number six, Rozell Scott on the tackle. And that's a first down for the Hurricanes. Ran fast with the football. Very quick team. Uh, they like this uh, up-tempo pace here. Owens going to take the snap with the throw. Fires one. That's too high and incomplete. That was intended for number 81, Braden Binnaker. Good coverage by Rozell. Uh, picking off of his player and uh, reading that ball pretty pretty well. So it's going to be second and 10 from the 38. For the Hurricanes. Stacked wide receivers again in the shotgun. Handed off here, Hill. And, and Jemias Glenn again. again on the tackle. That's three tackles for him this game and two for loss. Brought down at the 39, another tackle for loss. It's going to be third and 11 coming up for Wren. It looks like they just can't block him. Yeah, I might need to look into some more double teams here. He's doing a really good job of uh, really using those pass rush moves on him. They're down. Hoens takes the snap under heavy pressure. Scrambles out, trying to find a receiver, fires one. That is, looks like it's caught. Let's see what they rule. They are going to rule it a catch across the 30. He will be short of the first down, but a good play by Owens to escape the pressure and get the ball complete out to the 28. And it's going to be fourth down. It looks like Ram will go for it here and kind of out there in no man's land. I don't know about that call right there. Check that. Uh, they'll mark him at the 29, fourth and one coming for the Hurricanes. Four wide receivers in the shotgun for Owens. Keeper here, Owens around the edge, and he's gonna get a first down across the 25 yard line. Mark him at about the uh, 24, and we got a uh, bear slow to get up. It looks like that might be number two. That's Amari. Amari Jackson, he just made the intersection on the last drive. And training staff will come out to check on him. 
And it looks like he pops right back up, just kind of in some, hopefully just a little stinger there. Kind of landed on his leg, maybe twisted his ankle a little bit. Or yeah, he's going to hobble off the field. It seems like he just twisted his ankle up a little bit. Yeah, hopefully he'll be okay here as the um, hurricane offense come back. They'll have it first and ten from the 25 now. It's also it's all, it's always really good to see a uh, player be able to walk off on their own ability after they go down. Wren will come out, three wide receivers in the shotgun. I have two to the right, one to the left. Handoff right up the gut. Hill bounces to the outside and Taking not going to be able to get there. Number 54 on the stop for the Bears. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Brooks. Brooks on the stop. Brought down at about the 25. Loss. Maybe. Nah, they'll give him no gain. I'll call it no gain on the play. It'll be second and 10 coming up for the 25. Yeah, BHP's uh, game plan here definitely is to get, definitely get pressure on the quarterback. Oh, Wynn's going to take a deep shot down the field. It's intercepted. intercepted by Rozelle Scott. Picked off at the three-yard line. Took a one-on-one -on -one coverage with C.J. Willingham and Rozelle Scott wins that matchup. And Again, BHP, another player that we have talked about um, that, that you have heard us mention a lot. BHP will take over first and 10 from their own three-yard line. Another huge defensive play for the Bears. Rozelle obviously being one of the better defensive players in our region and uh, definitely one of the better uh, DBs in our region. So the Bear offense will come out first and 10 from their own three yard line. BHP with all sorts of momentum to start this ball game. Come up more of that heavy set, one wide receiver. Kind of. First down, hand it off right up the middle and nothing really there for um, Burns. So stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up for BHP from their own three. Bears will substitute Nevada Billups checks in from Malik Pickens. Second and 10 from the three. BHP comes out, trips to the right, empty backfield. Looks like they're kind of in that wildcat. Keeper here, Pendleton right up the gut. And Gets him a little bit of room. Yeah, a nice run across the 10 to the 11. Gain of eight on the play. It's going to bring up a third and two. He's definitely looking like a halfback on that run. So third down, two coming up from the 11-yard line. Looks like BHP's gone more of a just running the ball to say here than this side. Right. BHP seems a lot more prepared in this game than Rand does. Flag on the play. Looks like Rand jumped early. I have to see the call. It is an offsides on uh, Rand. So BHP will get a free first down. The one thing Rand couldn't do there was jump offsides, and it's exactly what they did. That's another thing we talked about, uh, being disciplined in tight situations like this. And Wren usually is one of those teams that are very, very disciplined. But uh, like, like we said, this is a very, very intense game. The crowd's real loud, and it's really hard to tell what's going on sometimes. And off uh, up the middle for Burns. There is a flag on the play. Flag on the play, and not much there on the carry. I have to see the call. Holding on the offense. Now I'll back him up 10. Almost right back to where they started. Yeah, all the way back to the six. Well, they'll mark him at the eight, half the distance. Obviously, some dis disciplinary issues going on both teams. Check it. it. Looks like they'll mark him at the seven. So, first down and 19 now for the Bears. They'll come out, two wide receivers and still in that heavy set. Handoff right up the gut. 
And again, not much there. Some extracurricular activity as well. Let's give some credit to the uh, some of the big boys up front. Just there's about three pancakes on that play. Yeah. And I brought uh, get him out to about the ten. It's gonna bring bring up a second and sixteen situation. BHP definitely does look a little more prepared than Ren in this game so far. Brant Holt's call check into the game at wide receiver. Bears have three wide receivers to the left and one to the right. It looks like Ren's defense is checked into more of a uh, of a run stopping defense and then the safety down and just Handoff on a jet sweep and not much there. Maybe a couple. That is number four, Eli Strickland on the carry for the Bears. And it's going to break up a third down situation for BHP. Third and 13, likely a passing situation. It's like the um, somebody has to get off the field here. Caleb Crenshaw a little late getting off, but BHP is able to get him off. Three wide receivers coming to look the throw. Steps up, scrambles. Looking, 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 firing one deep across That's the middle. It's caught! It's caught! It's caught down the field! It's 40, a bit of a holding call. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, And touchdown. he goes all the way. That's Nevada Billups, I do believe. Yes, yes Nevada that's Billups. number 15, Nevada Billups. What a play. 87 yards for Nevada Billups, and the Bears are all over Ren in this game early on. It's 13 nothing with 455 left in the first quarter. He just straight on out. He outran the guy there. That was a beautiful, beautiful play. One for um, A.J. Pendleton being able to evade not one, not two, but three defenders. Zach and Morrison able to get that ball off. On to attempt the PAT. And it looks like uh, Coach Blackson will call a timeout here for BHP. That was also a very well-placed ball right there. It yeah, was, it was. Depending on the fact that he, he was, was. It's just a pure scramble drill and desperation for Pendleton. He just flung it up there, but put it in a perfect spot for Billups to make the play, and then his speed. And well, the let's, let's not only uh, just give AJ some credit. Let's give Nevada some credit on that play too. He was being a little little drugging back there yeah, by the defender, yeah, and he still managed to break free, yeah, make it, that catch, and go all the way. Just, just such a beautiful play there by BHP. Morrison again on to attempt the PAT. Looks like BHP had a little bit of miscommunication the last time they were out there. Had to burn their first time out of the half. Snap's good. Hold is good. And the kick is up and good. No, it's no, no good. good. Looks like he missed it to the left. So with 4.55 left in the first quarter, the score remains BHP 13 and Ren nothing. Uh, one one major factor on that play was uh, the fact that Ren moved one of their safeties down in the box and, and it check them out into like a more of a cover. Yeah. Well, that's something you expect. You you heavy hitting the run plays, heavy heavy hitting, heavy hitting. So they uh, you make your defense question. You know, can can we really throw this ball? So they're going to stack that box and then. Once they stack it, it's all free game from there. Yeah, um, really yeah, nice play from Pendleton, like we said. And like I said, Nevada Billups deserves some credit there as Peter Bertoni will come on to kick deep for BHP. Maybe Trevon West and C.J. Willingham back deep for the Hurricanes. If I was BHP, I would, uh, I would run a little bit more play action and try to make some of, try to make that safety come up and then all it is is a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah, the only problem with that that um, might arise, rise up is um, BHP is not really known for their downfield passing game. If they, I can was certainly, they can certainly bust one on you. Looks like there'll flag be another down. flag. Yeah, another offside on BHP, looks like, on the kickoff. So they'll back it up five, and we'll do it again from the 35. Bears just really eager to get downfield there. It's definitely been a lot sloppier than I thought it would be. Yeah, we, we thought it would be a nice, clean, uh, very disciplined game tonight, but 
obviously both teams. I, I, again, you gotta you gotta mix in the nerves and the the eagerness to get out on that field and play against this rival team. Yeah, this is a huge region matchup. Um, winner likely, um, unless BHP can beat Daniel next week, winner will likely take the second spot in the region. If BHP is able to win this game and Daniel, I think they would take the region. As this ball is flooded around the 15 by um, West. West found the hole at a huge hit right there by 18. Marquise Henderson on the stop for BHP. It's going to be brought down across around the 40-yard line, but a nice play by Henderson to Again, stop I him. I don't know if y'all remember from uh, when we were calling the BHP Powdersville game, but Marquise Henderson was a huge, huge threat uh, to Powdersville. And as you can likely tell, he's becoming a huge threat to Wren tonight as well. He definitely came down here. Got, came, oof, came down there with some heat there. First and ten, Wren from the 42-yard line. They'll come out four wide receivers, two on both sides of the ball in the shotgun. Owens takes a snap, go to throw a quick pass that's complete to CJ Willingham and Rozelle Scott there on the stop, as is number 25. This Jordan. Check that, we do not have a 25 on our roster, so unable to tell who that is. Hand off right at the gut. This is Malachi Hill. And Hill's that got a nice run across the 40-yard line. Dragging BHP tacklers down with him. That's going to be a first down for Wren and then some. All the way into Bear territory. He was basically dragging that whole defense for a couple of yards there. Yeah, some good push by the big boys up front for Wren. And Hill, very powerful back. And we have an injured bear on the field. Looks like a cramping issue going on there. Going back to the last play there, uh, Mal Malachi Hill did a really good job of just moving his feet there and just keep pushing for more yards. Looks like that's number... That's number 24, Jemias Glenn. Yeah, a little slow to get up there. We've already called his name a few times tonight, so hopefully he'll... He, he is a huge, huge threat to any offense. Uh, it looks like just maybe a cramping issue. He'll probably get in there for too long, I would think, as the offense comes back on the field. Ram will have it first and 10 from their uh, the BHP 40-yard line. It looks like Nathan Madden has checked into the game. Come out four wide receivers, two on both sides in the shotgun. Takes a snap. Owens looking to throw. Fires one. That is complete at the uh, Trey Horn across the 30 yard line. That's uh, going to be close to another man first down. Looks like they'll mark up a couple inches short here. It's going to be second and short coming up from right at 30. Check that. They will call it a first down. Play action. That pass is behind the intended receiver. He is blown up on the play. Six, Rizal Scott assisted on the tackle is number 25. Landon Skelton on the reception for Wren. And it's going to be um, second down and oh, check that. Should be first or second and ten. Looking to throw here, firing one across the middle into traffic, but caught. That is Tanazi Rowe across the 20, or right at the 20. And yeah, they'll call that a first down. So another first down for Ren at the 20. Again, Hurricanes fast to the football, come out four wide receivers, two on both sides in the gun. Handoff right up the gut. This is Hill. Malachi Hill bounces to the outside. He's got space. He's got a touchdown for the Hurricanes. Malachi Hill, a 20-yard running touchdown, and Wren answers BHP. It's 13 to six with 3:14 left in the first quarter. He's showing a little bit of the speed there on that play. Yeah, Hill, a nice running back. Good blocking from uh, Wren. It looks like the fast pace got to BHP's defense. So it looks like the Hurricanes will come out with that uh, water bucket type formation.
On a tip, the PAT will have number 19. That is uh, JT Lincolnton. Gavin Owens is the holder. And that kick is up, and it is no, no good. Missed it to the right. So with 3.14 left in the first quarter, your score remains. BHP 13, ran 6. It looks like they had a little bit of trouble in the hold there, getting it down a little late. And yeah, that, that, that kick was, was a, yeah, far was, wide right. That was a, a pretty ugly kick to uh, put it quite frank there. Um, we, we're sorry about the inconvenience, but uh, number 25 is Jordan Johnson. Uh, we didn't have him down on our roster, but we have uh, fixed that. So, As um, Ram will come out to kick deep. Um, number 32, Lucas Reed, will kick for the Hurricanes. Back deep to return for BHP. We'll have number four, Eli Strickland. And number 18, Marquise Henderson. It looks like both teams have struggled uh, with extra points in this game so far. But both of them missing one. The kick. Nice deep kick from Reed with the field to about the six from Henderson. Henderson brought down right around the 23, 24 is where BHP was set up. First and 10. Their offense having no trouble moving the ball on their last drive. A, a remarkable play from a, both A.J. Pendleton and Nevada Billups to get a um, what was an 87-yard touchdown pass. We'll see if they can replicate that here. Well, wonder if BHP might try a little bit more play action if they want to stick to that heavy ground game that the Bears' offense are obviously known for as A.J. Pendleton leads his team back out onto the field. Looks like uh, BHP will set up more in that... Uh, Wildcat look. Seeing that a lot this year from BHP. It also looks like uh, Rin's putting a lot more people in the box. Pendleton will keep here on the option. Pendleton bounces to the outside. outside. He's got one man to beat. And he's being brought down across the uh, around the 40-yard line that by Trey Horns, able to get to him. But that's a first down for BHP and a nice game from A.J. Pendleton. Good read on the option there for Pendleton and BHP now trying to get a little bit quicker to the line. Of course, Bears a little bit more known for playing clock than uh, Rand is. Rand wants to get as many plays off as they possibly can. BHP, although they won't huddle, they will take their time getting to the football as BHP will come out two wide receivers in the shotgun. Handoff right up the gut and a big run right he up the middle. It. Across the 40-yard line, that is number 18. Marquise Henderson. Marquise Henderson across the 40 of Wren into the 38. It, man, this has just, been a very great game for him on both sides of the football, even on special teams. Most of the time we're used to seeing Wren's dominant defense, and they just seem a little bit off tonight. Yeah, yeah it's like I mean, more, more like what I said. They, they don't seem as well prepared as BHP does tonight. Uh, it seems like BHP just wants this yeah, game more you than they do. You can't not uh, – you got to give credit to the Bear offensive line, though, getting that push and able to open up holes for this running game. BHP very quickly down to the 38. They'll feed him again. Bounce to the outside. Henderson. He looks he's got like he's one got room. Beat. Can he get there? And Knocked he's out, of bounds out of bounds across the 10-yard line. It's going to be first and goal from the seven. Very for BHP. strong run by number 18, Marquise Henderson. Man, BHP coming out with something to prove on offense tonight. Looks like they're riding that momentum from the Seneca win last week. It looks like BHP seems very dominant in this game so far, especially on the offensive line. Bears Even though, yeah, go ahead, Zach. Bears will come out in the Wildcat again. Keeper here, Pendleton, right out the gut, and he'll cool. be stacked up around the four. He's still going, actually. Like I said, AJ Pendleton, he's a he's a small dude, but he is uh, really compact and really strong for yeah, his size. It looked like that pile wasn't moving, and all of a sudden it moved forward another yard or two, and it looks like they'll mark him at the two. Second and goal coming up for BHP. BHP's defensive line is looking extremely well tonight, even though they are missing a starter, number 90, uh, Xander Brown. 
And Rim will take their first time out of the half with a minute 33 left in the first quarter. Uh, your score is BHP 13, Rim 6, but the Bears are two yards away from yet another touchdown. This game has seemed very lopsided early on. Well, I wouldn't not I wouldn't say that quite yet because uh, outside of the two interceptions, Rin had put together a really nice drive that last time. But Rin's defense, it, I mean, it, BHP's, it, BHP's just running all over them so far. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I would say it's pretty lopsided yeah. towards BHP. It just feels as if uh, BHP's offense is just getting a better push at the push at the offensive line. I just don't feel like yeah. Rin's getting any pressure back there. Yeah. It, it, Ren, we, we mentioned this before. Wren is not a very big team. They are small and fast more so. So BHP with their big offensive linemen, they can really overpower them, and I think that's what we've seen so far in tonight's game. As the Bears come out in that heavy set again, Shaheem Robs is the running back. I handed off to Robs, and he's diving close, but he's going to be about a yard short. So it's going to be third and goal coming up from the one, maybe the half yard line. So BHP doesn't need a lot to get here. Robs will check out now. It's definitely felt that BHP is definitely winning at the line of scrimmage in this game. I feel like that's what's really made BHP feel so dominant in this game. We have an official timeout here. And we're ready to go now. Terrius Burns is in the game at running back. BHP again in that heavy set. Pendleton will keep here. Into and the end zone. In. That's a touchdown for BHP. Pendleton leaping over the line of script. The uh, red defensive line. And the uh, Bears continue to be red hot offensively. It's 19 to 6, pinning the extra point. Again, we got to give credit to the big boys up front. Almost every single yeah. uh, offensive lineman was on a pancake there, making it super easy for yeah, Pendleton this, to leap this, over and in. Size dip, the size really does matter in this game, and BHP's just out way, playing way more physical football than uh, Ren is. I, I would say BHP's quite a small team too, though. As this kick is up and good by number 84, Peter Bertoni. And with 55 seconds left in the first quarter, your score, BHP 20, Ren 6. We've had a very fast starting and high scoring affair so far, particularly for BHP. See what Ren can do offensively. Um, they, they had a nice drive the last time, but they have already thrown two interceptions. As coming on to kick deep, we'll have number 84, Peter Bertoni for BHP. Back deep for the Hurricanes. Looks like Trevon West and C.J. Willingham again. And uh, number 24, Jemias Glenn, is back out on the field. It's, it's good to see any player that has went down earlier on in the game back out to play some more downs. Here's the kick. And it's a nice kick. It's going to be fielded around the 20 by, um, that is Willingham. And Willingham bounces to the outside. He's got space. Got flag, fly, but Willingham. Down. That may be a hole. Yeah, that, Willingham that down ball the left sideline like is not down way of bounds back. at the 20. But it looks like there would be flags down on the field. I think, yeah, I do yeah. think that, that ball is coming way offense, back. Or on the return team, that ball's going to be backed up to around the 20, most likely. The uh, BHP 20, that it, or the Ren 20, that is. So a nice return from Trevon West, but it is negated by the penalties. Again, that that's, a, that's a disciplinary, disciplinary issue that uh, we've been talking about. That was definitely what Ren needed to get back in this. I don't want to say back in this game, but you're still in the game, but that right. would definitely to help. Stay, to stay there. Yeah, the but, momentum. Yeah, but then unfortunately. Again, we, we've always talked about that, uh, discipline is a big, big role and not just football, but in any sport. So Ram will start the same place. Um, West caught the football at the, their own 20. First and 10, Hurricanes. Again, Ram didn't have any trouble moving the ball the last time, but just have to see here. As Gavin Owens leads the team back out onto the field. BH, or Ram will come out three wide receivers. Two to, or two to the left, one to the right in the shotgun. 
And we got some early movement on the offense, it looks like. That is number 77. Caleb Carter a little eager to get started there for Wren. So and they'll Wren back it up five more to the 15 now. Mistake after mistake really killing Wren here in this game. Yeah, if Wren wants to stay in it, they need to be trying to um, avoid those mistakes at all costs. As on first and 15, they'll hand it off. Malachi Hill bounces to the outside, makes a man miss. And, and he'll be taken down by, by number Rozelle, six, Rozelle, Rozelle Scott. Scott. Out to about the 18-yard um, line. Gain of three on the play. Second down, 12 coming up for the Hurricanes. Ram will come out, trips to the right here. In the shotgun, Owens trying to get the play call in. Owens takes a snap, looking to throw, fires one down the field. That is it, that's almost intercepted. Number 23 right there for uh, BHP. Looked like that should have been a little bit of a hold call back there. Number 54, Jeremiah Brooks was just about to uh, take out the quarterback there and quite jerked back. What's the um, call here? That was a really good play by the defensive back there, even though he didn't come up with a uh, turnover. They might have come up with a turnover the way that, uh, oh, it's the end of the first quarter, that's what they're doing. <laughs> I was not paying any <laughs> bit of attention to the clock. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of the first quarter. Your score, BHP 20, ran six. So, um, we said uh, BHP's defense really stepping up here on this drive. Um, they'll have it third and 12 from the 18 at the end of the break. As Ren's offense comes back out onto the field. It's definitely felt like a BHP really knows how to attack that Wren defense. Yeah, definitely say that. Um, Bears seem like they always know what's coming defensively most of the time as Wren will come out four wide receivers in the shotgun. Third and 12 from the 18. BHP is causing nearly two turnovers a game this season. The only game without a uh, takeaway was against Abbeville. Owen's going to look to throw here. He's got all day to throw. He's going to loft one deep looking for Trey Horn. And Horn they makes the it. catch. Going up over the top of number seven, A.J. Pendleton back deep for BHP. And that's going to flip the field in a big way for Wren. A huge play for the Hurricanes. He's going to have it first and 10 for the BHP 34. Get beautiful throw from Gavin Owens. And a good catch as well from Trey Horn, the former quarterback. Going over the top of the BHP def defense. As on first down, they had it off. Bounce it to the outside, that's Malachi Hill. And a nice run for Hill. Going back to that catcher, Ramichi said, that ball's mine. He saw that ball in there, he just snagged it right there. Good job high point in the ball. And it was a well-placed ball, too. Good he gain was. down to the 27 here. Ran really fast to the football here. Owens will and keep around the edge. down in the, almost. And, yeah, brought down right around near the line of scrimmage. Good. Um, penetration from the BHP defense reading that option very well and it's going to come up with a third down and three for the Hurricanes the quarterback made the right play on that uh, read option there but they just both played it very well they basically had both of them covered up hand off right at the gut that's Malachi Hill and now that's going to move the chain to get a first down but a flag will fly in at the end of the play let's see the call here uh, BHP player down as well Training staff comes out to check on him. Anthony it looks like number 43, Anthony Brantley, down on the field. There is a face mask called on BHP. On BHP, so. Um, Gotta move the chains. Uh, yeah, give him 15 more or, or a good many more from the end of the play as um, the Bears still down on the field. 
he was at the bottom of that pile, so I can't really imagine what happened to Anthony there. I got rolled up on him there. But hopefully he's all right. It's, it really has been a beautiful night tonight, though. It's been a very good atmosphere on both sides for Ren and DHP. Yeah, as um, Brantley's up now, it looks like he's going to be helped off the field by the training staff. Not wanting to put a lot, any pressure at all on that left leg, so possibly a rolled ankle here issue for um, Brantley. Right leg, check that. He's had problems with that uh, knee before. He's had a ACL tear, I do believe, a um, little while back. As Rim will come out during uh, the shotgun here. Three wide receivers, two to the left, one to the right, in the shotgun for Owens as um, Brantley's still trying to make it off the field. So Rim up here with amazing field position to try to get their second points up on the board, or second score up on the board, I'm sorry. All right, now we're ready to go here. Handoff, Malachi Hill bounces to the outside. Hill's got space, and he's up ended on the play. He'll be clipped up by Rozell Scott. That was definitely a touchdown saving tackle. Man. Yeah, right there at the 20, uh, what's up, mark him down. Across the 10. Yeah, down at the five yard line. First down and goal, Hurricanes. Toss, here's Tanazi Rowe around on the end of round, and Rowe. And there's a hold. Yeah. That looks like it'll be a hold on number 25 for Wren. Um, Holding on the offense. That was uh, Malachi, Malachi Hill. Hill, the running back. Got a little bit too much jersey around the edge there. A lot of jersey, in fact. Around the edge there. That, that didn't make it. That hole didn't make a huge difference. He was right there, about to make that tackle. So that'll back um, ran up ten more yards, and they'll do it again. It'll be first and goal coming up for the 15 now. So again, another retry from almost where they started. First to go from the 15. Uh, Ren comes out three wide receivers to, or to the right, one to the left in the shotgun. Owen's going to look to throw here, steps up. He's under heavy pressure, skates for a second, and he's going to go down at the 20. Pressured up by number 56, Malik Pickens, and finally brought down by number 54, Jeremiah Brooks. And Pickens really getting in there and disrupting the play there. Lost five more, and it's going to be second and goal from the 20-yard line now. Once again, BHP just winning off of the line of scrimmage. Like we said, BHP has a very, very aggressive uh, defensive line. And they've, they've certainly proved that this game. They definitely outsize uh, Wren's offensive line. And uh, Jemias Glenn still hasn't came back in for Screen. defense yet. This will be complete to C.J. Willingham. That's and a little... lateral around the edge. That's Malachi Hill. He's heading for the end zone. Leads a man. Is he in? Uh, it seems like he Looks will like be. Looks like he'll be. Nope, they'll he'll they'll be mark him out. Out of bounds. four. That's... What a play call that was from the Wren uh, coaching staff. A little bit of tr uh, misdirection trickery there. Wren's always done a very great job of having those little trick plays when they really need a big play. That's something BHP definitely needs to look out for. Yeah, as um, they didn't seem too prepared for that one. Well, it's kind of—I think it'd be kind of hard to prepare for a play like that. That's reaching way deep into their playbook as Rim will come out four wide receivers in the shotgun. Third goal for the four. On school to throw fires one that is caught touchdown hurricane. CJ Willingham on the completion on the reception and Wren pulls back within one score. It's 20 to 12 pinning the extra point with 923 left in the first half. A good uh throw and catch there. Good throw by Owens burning it right in there and a good catch from um CJ Willingham. As Rand comes out in that water bucket, like they usually do. That's something we always see Rand do. And it looks oh, like they're actually trickery. pulling here. And, and they won't no, get that, it. that won't do it. I don't know if that was a too smart of a play this so, early on. 
So with uh, 9.23 left in the first half, the score remains BHP 20, Ren 12. Good play by the Bears special team stopping that uh, trickery. But they Usually, definitely could have executed that play a lot better instead of uh, just hiking it straight yeah. off to the side. They usually have somebody in uh, back there to catch the height to throw it over, but I don't, I don't know about that one. A very, um, I've always wondered, it's a very strange formation, uh, but a lot of teams have been doing it. That's the first time I've actually seen someone pull it and try to get the two points there. Un unfortunately for Wren, uh, it does not did not work out in their favor. But the Hurricanes will be kicking off here from their from the 40. <laughs> Back deep to return for BHP. Uh, number six, Rozelle, Rozelle Scott. I do believe that's number 18. Marquise, Marquise Henderson. Marquise Henderson. Back deep. Lucas Reed will kick deep for the Hurricanes. Every time Ring goes into like a hurry up, it feels like they almost catch a BHP defense lacking a little bit. Here's the kick from Reed, and it's offside to get on the kickoff. They've seen that an awful, awful lot in tonight's game. So they'll move it back, and Ring will have to re-kick from their own 35 now. This is the first time Ren has got a penalty on the kickoff. All the other ones have been on yeah, BHP. Yeah, BHP's got a couple already. Both teams a little eager to get started here. Ref said they ain't playing no games tonight. <laughs> As we'll re-kick here, like we said, now from the 35. Drive this kick. Time. That'll be fielded around the 15 from Henderson. Goes Henderson right around the edge. Got a block. Makes a man miss and spins out right around to the, the 34. 35. That's where BHU will set up first and 10. They're on 34 yard line. I've been seeing a lot more script quits uh, lately in these games we've broadcasted. <laughs> As the Bears will come out first and 10 for their own 34. BHP two wide receivers both on the right side of the ball in that heavy set. Again. BHP definitely has stepped up their offensive game. They've uh, In the last four games, BHP's thrown eight touchdowns, and in the first four, they only threw one. So they, they've definitely... Uh, and right up the middle here to around the 40. Good run that time. That was number 11, Interius Burns on the carry. Once again, just a giant hole for the running back to run through. Yeah, BHP um, running the ball extremely well off at the line, making, uh, getting some good holes. And the running back's hitting them. Again, this is a really good Wren defense. We've seen them shut down. I mean, even Pattersville had a hard time moving the ball against Wren. And Pattersville's one of the best teams at 3A this year. And Pendleton will keep here. He ran into the ball carriers, but he's able to get a first down and then some. Out to about the um, 47, it looks like where they're marking. Like we said, you got to give some credit to the big boys, even though BHP's offensive line isn't really that big. Looks like they'll mark him at the 48. First and 10, BHP for the 48. BHP again. It's like in the Wildcat formation. Hand off right out the gut, and a big hit. He is Henderson. gone. Marquise Again. Henderson to the house. Touchdown, BHP. No flags on the play. Yards. Very clean play. Wide open hole. Again, those big boys up front, and then the well executed play by AJ Pendleton and Marquise Henderson. Well read. Everything just beautifully matched up that that play right there. This is a remarkable game for Marquise Henderson tonight. Now BHP. Um, just coming out there and smacking Ren in the mouth. It's 26 to 12, pinning the extra point with 8.15 left. We obviously thought this game was going to be a lot closer, but 
uh, where you still do have a second half, and that's usually when the multitude of teams start to turn it up a little bit. Peter Bertoni on the 10th of PAT. High snap, and this one's up, and he'll boot it through. So with 8.15 left in the first half, your score, BH Beach 27, Wren 12. Bears just running all over BHP, or Bears just running all over Wren. <laughs> Bears just, running over themselves. Yeah, just running over the, <laughs> yeah, they're running all over Wren's defense in this one. Of course, they had that big pass play on the um, one of the drives, but so on these past couple, I just gonna run the ball right at you and challenge you to stop it. And so far, Wren hasn't really been able to. Pretty sure BHP scored every time the offense has touched the football in this one. And a touchdown at that. So really impressive start for the BHP offense. Coach Blyston looking to get his 99th win uh, tonight this game. That's obviously a big milestone when you hit that 100 mark. So he'd be one step closer to that 100 mark at, uh, if he's able to win, pull this win off tonight for the Bears. He's been coaching there for a really long time. As coming on to uh, as back need to return the kickoff for Ren, we'll have um, Trevon West and CJ Willingham. Bertoni will kick deep. See if uh, we can have a kickoff without someone starting a little early. We've seen three offsides in the kickoff so far in this game. We're only about less than four minutes into the second in the second quarter. There's the whistle. And there's the kick, a high kick. It's gonna be fielded at around the 22. That's Malachi Hill fielding the kick and Hill around the edge. He's got blockers. And he's gonna be brought down across the um, 30 to about the 32. Look, like he tried to split his blockers right there a little too early. Maybe a little bit too eager to try to hit a hole that hadn't quite opened up yet. He could have bounced around the outside and still had a wide open lane. I don't know what he was thinking right there. Maybe the, the play was just getting to him. He was moving a little too fast there. So Wren will set up first and 10 for their own 33-yard line. Wren, who can't uh, not – we've got to give credit to their offense. They've been able to move the football their past couple of drives as well as Owens go look to throw. Fire one. That is almost intercepted. Looks like Rozell Scott was there. But I, I think that ball was thrown a little bit too hard. And just in the blink of an eye, nobody could even see it. I don't think. We we have mentioned Rozelle in the past and uh, of why he's one of the better DBs. But I, I'd say one of the mo the better reasons why he's one of the better DBs in the league is uh, mainly because he has great field uh, vision. He's able to see that quarterback in his corner at the same time or his uh, receiver at the same time. Oh, it's going to let that throw here. It's going to fire one. That's complete. That's Trey Horn. Makes a man miss. Horn bounces to the outside. Spins across midfield. Horn down to around the 45. First down and then some for Wren. Trey Horn really being an impact. Right there. Really an impact player early on in this one. That was Jemias Glenn, number 24 on the tackle there. And he, as he uh, jumps up, hops up, and hobbles away a little bit. It seems like he'll be okay, though. Ran fast in the football. They go trips and right here. Four wide receivers. Handoff right at the gut. Malachi Hill. He's got one man to beat. Hill. He's going to score. Touchdown, Ren. Malachi Hill. 45 yards. And the Hurricanes answer again. We've had we've got a good old-fashioned shootout here at Ren. It's 27-18 pending the, the uh, conversion for the Hurricanes. Once again, Ren just showing how explosive they really can be. Ren's starting to turn it up a little bit. Ren again out there. It looks like this time they'll just straight up go for two. Not even trying to pull any trickery. And BHP will call a timeout. Try to get their uh, talk over what they want to do here, strategy-wise. Man, these offenses came to play tonight. Outside of the two interceptions thrown by Ren to start the game, they've had no trouble moving the football either. And some great passing downfield. So, Sets up some big runs for Malachi Hill. The real big uh, thing that's made BHP come out on top here is uh, the fact that those bit two big turnovers there early in the game. 
Yeah, the, the turnover has really been the difference, but, you know, BHP's offense has scored every time they've had the football. Rand hasn't been too, too bad either. They've scored, outside those two interceptions, they've scored on every other possession. I'm going to give you some quick score updates. Um, in the second quarter, Seneca leads Pendleton 36-0. No surprise there. Westside and Wahala are tied at 16 apiece. As we're just about ready to go. Crescent leading West Oak 28-0. Greer leads Eastside 13-7. Abbeville over 96, 35-0. Clinton over Emerald 27-0. As we're ready to go now, as Ram will come out. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right in the shotgun. Owen's going to look to throw. He's going to roll to his right, a fire one. That's going to be caught, and the two-point conversion is good. And with 736 left in the first half, Rams within a touchdown. It's 27-20 to in favor of BHP. BHP is very ill-prepared on that play. Yeah, it looked like the old uh, Clemson play they ran to win the national championship there. One of the hardest plays to defend. Good old Philly special. Make sure to come out to uh, Boo in the Park next Saturday in Mineral Springs, um, Williamston, South Carolina. Uh, you can see the ACTC crew there, and um, we'll have a great time. As number four and number 18 are back deep to return for BHP, that is Eli Strickland and Marquise Henderson. Lucas Reed will kick deep for the Hurricanes. See if BHP can uh, still score so proficiently so far. Because Ren is just just in strike to come back in this game. Here's the kick. It's a high pooch kick, and that's going to be fielded around the um, and brought down. Right around the 36, that was number 10, Brock Turner. Filled in the kick and then being brought down immediately by the uh, Ren kickoff team. But BHP will start first and 10 from their own 36 yard line. Again, Bears offense scored a touchdown in every possession so far. Let's see if they can keep that up or if Ren's defense has an answer for them. BHP's not, I don't think they're really trying to hide what they might be wanting to do here is to come out again in that heavy set. Two wide receivers. Pelton takes the snap, will hand it off around the edge, and a good run. Shaheem Robs with the carry. And Robs across the 40. To He'll around be brought the, down by number 18, Shavis Edwards. Um, Rob's brought down around the 43-yard um, line. It's going to be second down and three coming up for the Bears. Handed off again here. Rob's trying to find that hole. Um, unable to find it. And he'll be brought down close to about the 45. Mark him. Let's see where they mark him. At the 46-yard line. Ren's, de Ren's defense there did a really good job of closing up all those holes uh, to make sure the running back didn't have really any wide open gaps like he has had all night. So it's going to be third down, less than a yard. Um, chain crew had the down marker incorrect. Let's see what's going on. What's going on here? Okay, let's uh, we'll have a measurement here. Ball right now at the 46. And it will be short. Yeah, he'll be short. So we'll have a third down. Eh, we'll say about the length of the football for BHP. Third and one from the 46. 
BHP in that heavy set again. A lot of noise coming. Keeper here, Pendleton. And he'll get a first down and then some. Out to about the 40, close to the 49 yard line. Yeah, mark him right at the 49. First and 10 BHP. Nice run by AJ Pendleton. Boy, he is a tough player right there in the backfield. He's willing to take some shots. Rin really needs to try to get some pressure back there. As on two wide receivers in the shotgun, again in that heavy set. They'll hand it off here. Marquise hit her. Check that that is Dentarius Burns, and Burns will get. Uh, we'll say a handful there. Let's let them mark them around the 45. Gain of about six, we'll say. Second and four coming up for BHP. Bears really aren't trying. It doesn't like they're really trying to fool anybody. They're just running it at him, and Rin just can't stop it. If it ain't broke, don't fix yeah, it. Yeah, right. exactly. Hand it off again. This is Henderson, and he won't get much. Good penetration that time by Ren's defense. Looks like they'll mark him around the 40, say the 43 yard line. Third down and about two for BHP. About a guess here, they're gonna run the ball. Yeah, I, I, I strongly guess another run. You never know. This would, be, this would be the perfect time to play action and take a shot down deep here on second and two. Third and two. They will run it and... They won't get it. Yeah. It was Burns on the carry and he stacked up right at the um, Check line that. of that scrimmage. Was Marquise Henderson. Number 27, Malachi Woodruff made a really good play there just getting just out running that offensive lineman and yeah Malik Malik Woodruff um, one of the best players on Wren's defense really a lot down corner Wren's got two impact players on that defense Nick Morgan and Malik Woodruff as BHP looks like they're gonna try to go for this Wren really starting to make some noise here getting quite BHP's rowdy BHP's always been really bold with their decisions on fourth down it's a miscommunication and, and I don't think they got that that's going to be close, but I don't think he got there. He run, ran right into the pile, and it looks like Ren stood strong. It did seem like he crossed the first down, but he was brought back. Usually that results in a first down. They'll call for a measurement here. Um, he might have crossed the first down, but that is just so close and such a tough call to make. I don't think he got this. I don't think, uh, I think he's a, a little he bit short. Yeah, he is. He's going to be a... Yeah. yeah, and Ram will take over. A good defensive stop for the Hurt. Now the momentum shifts over to Ram with 4.05 left in the first half. They trail it 27 to 20, but they got the football in pretty good, decent field position at their own 41. I do believe he did cross that, uh, that marker. He just got brought back behind it. Usually it's supposed to be a first down, but I don't think the refs seen, uh, seen that. Ren will come out. Four wide receivers, trips to the left here. Owen's gonna look to throw here under pressure. Fires pressure. one, that is incomplete. incomplete. And a flag flies. That is that, a very questionable call there I if it's on the defense. I don't think that, uh, that should be a flag there. That ball was in the hands when he went up. Trey Horn, the intended receiver, we'll see the call. It will be called pass interference on BHP, and that's not gonna make the Bears all that happy. That's a very, yeah, very I, questionable call. Yeah, I don't know if I really agree with that one. It looked like I, it looked like all the contact was made once he had the football, but yeah, no matter, yeah, Ramble um, get it. First down and 10 from their own, for the BHP 44 now. They'll come out troops to the left again here, four wide receivers. Owens takes a snap, looking to throw. Steps up and gonna take a deep shot down the field and that is incomplete. That was just out of, that was just out of the hands of them. 
Looks like Tanazi rode. Right through him. Yeah, just a little bit overthrown. Looks like he might have had Willingham downfield as well if he wanted to go that route. Um, either which way, it's a pretty risky play. Both were pretty well covered. But um, there will be second and 10 coming up for the Hurricanes at the 46. To the 44. Handoff right at the gut. Um, and a met flag. By number nine, Trayvon DeVoe. That, that may be a hold call on the offense, but I'm not too sure. Yeah, uh, Malachi Hill on the carry. Um, typically, those are our holds. And it will be a hold on the offense. So I'll back him up 10. That's huge for BHP right now. That was number nine on the uh, tackle, Travion DeVoe. It's been a kind of been a sloppy game on both sides. It has. Yeah, it has. I definitely agree with that. Lots of penalties, both teams, as Rim will have it now at the 49, second down and 15. Come out. Four wide receivers, two on both sides, in the shotgun for Owens. Fate the end around to Willingham, and Owens is in some trouble. He ain't got nowhere to go with the football, and he's brought down right around the line of scrimmage by the Bears' defense. Good coverage downfield, and BHP's in a good position to hold here. It's third down that's, and 15. That's number 43, Anthony Brantley, on the tackle for loss there. Uh, he was having some uh, knee problems earlier on. And good to see and, him back uh, in there. Yeah, he's back up in the game and obviously doing pretty well. It's going to be third down and 15 from the 49 for Wren. Stack wide receivers, two on both sides in the shotgun. Looks like BHP changed it up and went with a three-man front this time. Owens going to look to throw. Steps up, firing one deep down the field, and no one's there. It's incomplete. Looks like he was trying to throw the deep ball, but no one was going deep enough. And BHP's defense will hold after their offense stalls for the first time. And BHP's offense will get it back as it looks like Wren's going to try to punt here. If it feels like Wren's not really trying to get the ball out quick to the receivers. They feel like they're just taking shots. Yeah, it, yeah they're, they, they're, they, they have, but they have thrown a little quick out. Just seem to be very effective as um, looks like number JT Wingington will be the punter. Eli Strickland will return for the Bears. Good punt. Nice little punt. Might we'll go out of bounds. Yes, it right, does. Right at the 20. So BHU is set up first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. So Bears backed up pretty deep in their own territory. It's a nice punt there. Kept it just in range and didn't go too far with it. Yeah, kind of like like we said. Um, with the um, quick outs, you know, when Rian has been running those plays, it's really been effective. But it's felt like the defense just, just seems like they haven't been wanting to run it. It felt like the defenses here, uh, the defenses have kind of taken momentum here and kind of slowed down both of the offenses here in these last couple of drives. Yeah, that's that's usually what you expect with uh, BHP's defense is they always seem to turn it up uh, in tight situations and seem to carry the BHP offense a little bit. Um, but tonight, it looks like they're going to have a personal foul call against Wren. Now move it all the way down to the 35. That's where BHP will set up first and 10. So, did not see what happened, but something must have been said somewhere. Pretty good field position for BHP. Yeah, they'll come out in that heavy set again. And flags will fly. That may be on defense. Maybe on sides. Once again, false on start the on the offense. So, they'll back BHP up five to the 30. Check that. Look at that called. Two wide receivers now in the shot. Got again in that heavy set. Hand up around the edge. This is Burns. Huddles over a man. Nice run. And a nice run down. Gets them right back to where they need to be. A little slow getting up, but he does get up. Number 27, Malik Woodruff hobbling off the field for 
Rin. Rin. Hopefully that's not too serious. Ludrup's a very impact player. Number 50, also coming off the field for BHP. That is Jace Rince. Uh, no, number 56, Malik Pickens will be checking in. Rince's defense there was definitely there to make the play, but the running back just had a little bit of wiggle in him and uh, was able to turn it back inside. Second and eight now from the 37. Keeper Seems here, like Pendleton, tries to find the hole and he's, does, is able to squeeze through for a few yards. Seems like Jace just had a bit of a, a equipment difficulty there. Yeah, he And he a looks, little bit of blood on his leg. They're taping that up and then getting his cleat fixed up. <laughs> yeah, I hope we, uh, as Pendleton gets it out across the 41. Rents looked really kind of irritated when he walked off the field. He just got scratched up a little bit there. As it's going to be third and four for the Bears. BHP remains in that heavy set. Handoff right up the gut. Shaheem robs and yeah, bouncing to the outside. <laughs> and not able to get the first down marker, not able to get to the first down, as Rim will call a timeout with a minute 29 left in the first half. Big decision here uh, from, for BHP here to go for it, a punt it here on fourth and one. And BHP will get the ball back at halftime, so it is ideal for them to score in this situation. That way, that way they can put uh, two scores up on the board without Rim's offense coming out on the field. But then again, if you turn it over here, you give Wren a minute 29 seconds to go about 40 yards down the field, so. Yeah, it's huge, a huge decision for BHP here. I could understand uh, both decisions. Yeah, um, it is, you're kind of backed up deep because if you don't get this, then Wren only has to go 44 yards and then they're in the end zone. And we've seen Wren do that on one play numerous times, which you can also argue we've seen Wren go 80 yards on one play numerous times this season. Hurricanes definitely have that quick strike ability when they um, are able to get the, the play. We've seen them hit that against several teams, but BHP is known for having a, or does have a very good secondary, secondary particularly with um, Rozelle Scott back there, their lead corner. If, if it was up to me, I'd, I'd go for it in this situation. and. Uh it looks like BHP is going to uh, just play field position here as Eli Strickland comes out as the punter. Like I said, I, I, I would go for it in this situation. Uh, they're right there at it, and their their offensive line has seemed strong enough this entire game to push it on over. Nick Morgan and Trevon West. And let's see what BHP is going to try to do here. Almost like they're trying to draw them off sides. And they're gonna fake it here. They'll keep it, and he, he got, got it. it. Yeah. That's number 24, Jemias Glenn on the carry. Aggressive play calling for BHP early on, and the Bears will move the chains. It's first and 10 now, out to about the 40, mark about the 48 yard line. And BHP keeps the momentum on their side. Bears coaching staff, very excited up here in the booth as BHP's quick to get back up to the field. Clock's ticking. Handoff to Terrius Burns right at the gut. And he's brought down into Ren territory at the 45. Check, that's Marquise Henderson on the carry. Number 18. What a what a block by number 50 there. Just putting number two for Ren right into the ground. And number 50 is Jace Rents. Second down, Pendleton's gonna look to throw here. He's gonna take the deep shot. He's got it, maybe. It! Pass interference. And they will throw the flag. Yeah, that's number 20. Looks like that's number 24. He also came down with that ball, didn't he? No, right, he, he's saying he, he, did, he, he was not, not able it. to uh, come down with it. But it, did, it, it did come in into one of his hands. He. Yeah, that was a pretty good throw from Pendleton. Um, slightly underthrown, and the Wren defender just kind of all over him. I see the call here. Are they going to call it on BHP? They might wave the flag off. It's going to be a hold on the offense and pass interference on the defense. So it'll be offsetting penalties because there was a flag in the backfield as well. So they'll replay the, the, the down here. It's going to be second down four from the 45 of BHP. 
39 seconds left. Let's see if BHP can do something here. Feels like a little to throw here. And he's under pressure, and he's going to be Rise thrown to the ground. Very kind of roughly there. That looks like Nick Morgan on the sack for Wren. That's the first time we've heard his name all night, but he yeah. came up clutch Mor here. Morgan is um, back there with uh, Malik Woodruff, is probably the two most impactful players in that Wren defense. Huge play, dropping them back. A good little bit, and with 15 seconds left, Rim will take a timeout. BHP does get the ball to start the second half. So the wind's starting to pick up a little here. It has been a very windy night tonight. It's definitely felt like some football weather for sure. Yeah, nice. Finally starting to get into it. Nice temperature, great weather, but just a little windy. Got papers blowing around all over the place in the press box. You know Go when you get that, that little bit of chill in the air, that's when uh, the clutch time, crunch time games are. Yeah, a couple of our cameramans are starting to complain <laughs> about the uh, about the weather here. Right, so it looks like we're just about ready to play as BHP will come out. It'll be third and 11 for the 47. Let's see if BHP tries to take a shot here. If they just try to run it, run the clock out. Red is out of timeouts, so if BHP just wants to go down to a knee, they can end the first half if they wanted to. Uh, I know Coach Blaston, and Coach Blaston won't do that. He's going to want to punch that ball down your throat as much as possible. They will hand it off here, and that's Burns, and he breaks the tackle. Looks like he's going to get a first down. He will get the first down out to the they 40. They timeout. Nine seconds left. Wait, I, I don't think... He BHP. wanted the timeout because he did get the first down. Yeah, BHP so. doesn't want to call the timeout, but they need to get to the ball. The clock's winding. Six, five, I don't know. four. And BHP will have to take the timeout with about four seconds left on the clock. I'm not really I don't know what the offense was doing there, but if you're not going to call the timeout, you got to get to the uh, line of scrimmage and spike it. it. Was, there was definitely some confusion between uh, players and coaches there. I'm not really sure whether they didn't just call the timeout right there and then. That was BHP's last timeout of the half. So you could have, you know, looked to get a, a nice chunk play and then, then call the timeout. Go for a timeout. Yeah. It seems like this is going to be the last play of uh, this drive yeah, before end we of head into the halftime. Yeah, end of halftime of the first half. Yeah, it definitely looks like some miscommunication down there between the players and the coaches. And I feel sure the coaches aren't too thrilled about that. As BHP's offense will come back out. They got it first and 10 from the um, – Ran 40 yard line. Four seconds left. Probably see as Ran's. Come out in a tight situation here. Yeah, looks like Ran's going to play the prevent here. Let's see what kind of play BHP pulls out of the, their hats here. Play action. He's going to look to throw. Penalty will fire when that's complete. That's Dan Terrace Burns. Burns and Great, makes a man oh. miss. Makes another man miss. And Burns run out of bounds. And That'll that's the end of the half. first half. At halftime, we got a real close one, a real high scoring one. Your score BHP 27, Ren 20. Bears will get the ball when they to start the second half. And we will be right back with our halftime report.
Definitely for uh, BHP. So, for rushing yards, we got Eli Strickland. He has one rush for three yards. A.J. Pendleton, nine rushes for 39 yards and one touchdown. Uh, Shaheem Robbs, five rushes for 15 yards. Then Terrace Burns, eight rushes for 67 yards. Get this. Marquise Henderson, four rushes for 85 yards and one touchdown. And I'm sorry, uh, the Terrace had a touchdown as well. And then um, we had Jemias Glenn. He had one rush for three for three yards and uh, for passing for BHB AJ Pendleton two completions two attempted two completed for 108 <laughs> yes. yards and one touchdown That's crazy it's um, of course you know BHB won't doesn't throw it much but when they do they can certainly pop one on you they did that um, with an 87 yard touchdown to um, Nevada Billups in the first half the Billups are star receiver um, Ren. Ren, yeah, Ren, Ren rushing. Gavin Owens has four rushes for only two yards. Uh, Malachi Hill has 11 rushes for 101 yards and two touchdowns. Malachi um, Hill, definitely a, an impact player, very powerful running back. We've seen him bust a couple in this ball game. And then for uh, passing, Gavin Owens has, has had 17 attempts, only completed 10 for 137 yards and one touchdown. So and BHP, two interceptions as well. Yeah, BHP is leading in stats. Um, so on paper, it has shown that BHP has yeah, really been dominating this game, it seems like. But it is quite a tight game, 27-20. Rent, Rent, I will say this, Rent has done a remarkable job responding from those two picks they threw early on in the game. They were down 13 to nothing. And then after that, Rins just really hung in there, showing by only a touch and a half down. BHP does get the ball to start the second half. Um, and you know, Ren 
you know, typically the second half is really when you start to see what kind of teams these two really are. Yeah, you know, so we've seen that several times. Of course, the first game we ever did this season, uh, we had Powdersville and Broom, and, pa- and Broom was winning that game by I think it was like twenty-eight to nineteen at halftime, and then Powdersville just blew them out in the second half. Yeah. Um. So real quickly, some halftime scores from across the uh, region. Um. Seneca leads Pendleton at halftime, forty-three to nothing. Palmetto and Southside are tied, 14-14 at halftime. Powdersville leads Blue Ridge 48-21 at halftime. Patriots trying to remain undefeated. They're trying, looking to move to 9-0 with a win tonight. Westside leads Wahala 24-16 in the third quarter. Daniel is off this week, so we do not have a game with Daniel. Daniel will be in action next week at BHP. We will have that game for you on the Polk Sports Network. Eastside leads Greer 14-13 at half. Clinton over Emerald 34-0 in the third quarter. Goodness. Abbeville over 96, 42 nothing at halftime. Crescent over West Oak, 42 nothing at halftime. Woodmont leads Maud in 21 to 14. That one's still reporting in the first quarter. Union County over Chapman, 21 14 at the halftime. Spartanburg over Riverside, 21 nothing in the third quarter. Greenwood over Greenville, 23 14 in the third quarter. Travers Rest up at 21 in the third. Dorman all over Wade Hampton, 47 at halftime. So get this. For penalties in this game, both teams have had seven penalties. BHP's had seven penalties, uh, costing them 48 yards. And uh, Wren's had seven penalties, costing them 60 yards. Yeah, so penalties has really been a, a big, big problem in this game. And another big difference in this game, BHP has converted five out of seven of their uh, third down conversions. And Wren's only converted three out of seven. Yeah, that's actually kind of surprising because both teams have moved the ball really well on offense. I think pretty sure both the BHP stops were on their last two drives of the half. Yeah. They started perfect five for five. And BHP's actually uh, holding the ball on longer than ran, just just one minute longer. Time of possession for BHP is 12 minutes, 30 seconds. The time of possession for Wren is 11 minutes and 30 seconds. Very quickly before... Um, as both teams are out in the field warming up some other scores very quickly... Hannah um, leads Burns 14-7 at halftime. Gaffney over Clover 14-0. That was in the third quarter. So, BHP's uh, leading total yards 320, and Rand's only got 240. Yeah, it's quite, but, a, quite an evenly battled yeah, game here. It just seems like disciplinary issues and uh, whoever just wants the wants it more. Yeah. Really, the difference in the game have been those two interceptions uh, thrown by Gavin Owens. Of course, we talked about freshman mistakes in the pregame show. Owens yeah. did make a couple of those. Um, you'll get that with a young quarterback. But, yeah, it's been a really, really evenly played game by both these teams. Both these teams are have had a great running game, and when they've had to throw it, they've had some success throwing the ball as well. So um, we're going to take about a couple minutes um, until the start of the third quarter. Uh, we will be right back with second-half football.
All right, we are back now as both teams are ready to kick off. Lucas Reed will be kicking deep for the Hurricanes to start the second half. Uh, looks like we'll have number 18, Marquise Henderson. And number six, Rozelle Scott. Uh, hopefully we're having a good game here. A good second half here. Yeah, as um, Reed will kick deep. And it'll be flooded around the 10. That looks like that is actually number 40. Eli Strickland spins, spun around, and he's going to be stacked up. He really just didn't want to go down on that play. Yeah, he's able to get it out to close to, to the 25. And that's where BHP will set up first and 10 to start the second half. Bears, like we mentioned just a little bit ago in the halftime report, it's been a really, really good running game so Ex far for extremely BHP. Extremely well running game. Yeah. Just everybody who can help out has been helping out running the ball. The offensive line's getting a good push. And BHP's had a lot of carries from a lot of different players. They're on track for 424 yards rushing. Yeah, I, I would say <laughs> that's, a, that's ridiculous yeah. for one game. I would say the uh, major reason why BHP is winning because they're winning. They're just so dominant at the line of scrimmage in this game so far. As Pendleton leads his team back onto the field to come out two wide receivers in the shotgun. Pendleton will keep here on first down, bounces to the outside, lowers his shoulder, and is brought down awkwardly. That's a bold move made by the quarterback. Lowering your shoulder against the defender, being a quarterback, is always a risky thing to do. Yeah, he's going to be brought down around the 28-yard um, line, gain of three, second and seven coming up for the Bears. A.J. just proven out there that he ain't scared of nobody. BHP, again, um, does, they're not necessarily the quickest team to get to the football. They will take their time as coming in motion. They'll hand the ball off here right at the gut it's quite and making a man for miss. BHP since the past, uh, in the past years, BHP is usually a hurry first offense. They they like to get on the ball and get it gone, but they are they are definitely taking their time yeah, here. It's, it's not necessarily like they huddle, but they certainly do want to kill that clock. Maybe a, a product for A, they have such a good running game, and for B, their defense has struggled a little bit the past couple, the past few weeks. Um, although BHP's won most of those games in blowouts as the um, as BHP comes up, trips to the right here. Third and three from the 32. Empty backfield for Pendleton. Hand the ball off on the end of the round, it's and he's got a first there. down, and, and spins more. away. Flags will fly. Flags. Might be a hold call there. Cross um, near the um, 45 is looks like where they're uh, marking, but there are two flags down. Might looks be like we, a hold call. Looks like we might also have a, a horse collar as well. Like um, might have had a little bit of a rough tackle on Ren. We'll see the calls here. Yeah, it will be on Ren. That's Face a mask on yard. the defense, and now moving forward 15. And that is it. huge for BHP. That's a that's a big confidence killer for Ren too for this drive. Marching the ball down to the 41. Anytime you get a personal foul, it's it's never good. Of uh, Ren, obviously, but that's, they're that's, they're in that situation, and that's just something they gotta be more disciplined on. Handoff right up the middle. That is um, Henderson, and Henderson's brought down across the 40. Looks like a bit down around the um, 30. Mark him at about the 39, so gain of a yard. It looks like a wrench check into more of a, like a five front almost right here, which means they have they have five uh, defensive linemen at the a defensive lineman at the line of scrimmage to hopefully. Uh, that's stop that's more team. of a, a nickel formation. I don't know. Keeping here is Pendleton, and he's down across the uh, down to near the 35. And it's going to be a third down and four coming up for the Bears. BHP trying to get the play call in again, taking their time on third and four. Come out, um, two wide receivers in that heavy set to the left. Handed off here. This is Shaheem Robs, and Robs uh, flag will fly in from the backfield. That's going to be a hole call on 49, it seems like. 
Yeah, that would be uh, Reese Pruitt. That was just about a drive. That was just about a drive kill there. And we'll see the. Yeah, it will be a hold on BHP. Anytime the umpire throws the flag in there, it's probably either one or two things: hold or rushing or roughing the passer, and really couldn't rough the passer on a running play. So it'll be a hold on BHP. And now back them all the way up to about the 46-yard line. Third down now, and a ways to go. About third and 15. Two wide receivers. Pendleton with throw play action. That's incomplete. That was intended for Eli Strickland. And Wren's defense gets a nice stop following the hold call on the Bears offense. And it looks like BHP will come out and try to punt here. It's kind of felt like uh, the only way to stop BHP's offense is really when BHP makes mistakes on the third down and second down, it feels like. Yeah. The penalties, the penalty on this drive definitely really killed him. BHP, you know, they certainly can throw the ball when they have to. It's not necessarily the prettiest passing offense. It's strict, Eli Strickland Beautiful will punt. punt. Be yeah, good punt. Back them all the way up to the 12, and that'll be fair caught by Nick Morgan. So Wren will have a long ways to go back to deep into their own territory as they'll set up first and 10 from their own 13-yard line. So good play by the Wren defense um, and, uh, stopping BHP. Defense has really stepped up these past few drives. We haven't seen any points for a little while. I mean, early on in this game, BHP had four possessions, four touchdowns. And Rand had scored on three of their first five possessions, including three in a row. But both defenses have started to um, pick it up a little bit over the past quarter. Four wide receivers in the shotgun for Owens on first down. Takes a snap, rolling to his left, looking to throw, fires one. That is going to be complete. That's Tanazi Rowe, makes a man miss, spins away. Rowe's going to get a first down and then some, running out of bounds. Around the 30-yard line. Nice play to Tanazi Rowe. That's the um, play we were talking about in that first half that BHP had had some trouble with, but Rand hadn't run all that much. He showed a lot of wiggle in that play right there. Ran very quick to the football. Four wide receivers again. They'll hand it off here. This is Trevon West. Bounces to the outside. West lowers the shoulder. And he gets down close to the 40. That was number six. Rozelle Scott on that uh, little ankle biter there. West brought down around the 39. It's going to be second and one coming up for Ren. Four wide receivers in the gun again. They'll feed West again in the back foot. He's got, he's in some trouble and he ain't got nowhere to go. Met right by number 24, Jemias Glenn. And that, I'm telling you, he is not a little dude. Stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. That's going to be third and one coming up for the 39. Malachi Hill will check it to the game with running back for West. We will come out. Trips to the left here. Four wide receivers in the gun for Owens on third and one. The hand it off here, he'll right up, or Owens will keep rather, and he'll get it out. That was a good read right there. Yeah, to around the 45, first down, Wren. Good play by Gavin Owens, pulling the ball out, bouncing to the outside, and getting the first down for Wren. That's a big conversion for Wren. It's felt like uh, ever since Wren came out of this halftime right here on this drive, especially this drive, it's felt like they're going to more shorter plays here. Yeah, they are. First down, the hand it off. 56. And Malik Pickens back in the backfield, assisted by. Uh, number nine, Travion DeVoe, and 24, Jemias Glenn. He just straight about powered the offensive lineman there to make that play. Oh, yeah. Malik is a very, very strong dude. He'll lose about three, second and 13, coming up for the 42. Four wide receivers in the gun for Owens. Looking to throw here, rolling to his left. Firing one deep down the field. He's got Willingham, and, and it goes miss. through his hands. Right through his hands. Willingham looks like he should have had that one. That would have been huge up. for Wren if they would have caught if he would have caught that ball. And it's gonna be third and thirteen coming up for the forty-two now. They found for, BH, a, or for Wren. Seems like Wren's found a weakness in uh, BHP's pass game or uh, pass defense, and they just seem to miss up mess up on that one right there. Wren will come out four wide receivers in the shotgun. Right through the bread basket on that last play there. Owens takes a snap, looking to throw here, steps up, rolling to his left, fires one. That is almost, almost intercepted. intercepted. 
He has got an arm on him. Now he can certainly fling it. The only problem is that sometimes the accuracy is not quite there. It looks like that was yeah, intended for does, Trey Horn. It does seem like sometimes he just looks in a general area and hopes for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, he could certainly, I mean, this guy's got to be one heck of a pitcher on the baseball team. He could probably really fire one in there. Right. As on um, third, fourth and 13, Ren will come out, look at the punt. He Number is, four, Eli Strickland back deep to return for BHP. Uh, the quarterback is only a freshman. He's about 6'4", right? Yeah, he's a 6'4", freshman quarterback. So he has plenty a lot of, of... A lot uh, of potential, too. Yeah, he's, yeah, and we've seen that potential as Bob fumbled the snap here a little bit. Luckily, BHP not bringing a lot of pressure. And that's going to be a good point. Bob oh, and and Yeah, Red's going to fall on it. Trevon West picks it up, and he's run out of bounds around the 10. That's a muff punt, and Ren will recover. Huge play that time by the Hurricanes. Big I'm, special teams play. I don't know what Strickland was doing there. Should have just let that one go. I'm not sure. Most of the time, you get a Peter call there. Which yeah. a Peter call means you try to get away from the ball as much as you can. I don't know if he just didn't hear it, or I don't really know what he was thinking there, because there's no reason he really should have. That's kind of an obvious ball, thing that you should have just yeah, let that go. Yeah, you should have just let that one go. That's huge. As huge Rimmel come out in the red zone, first to 10 from the BHP 19 that's yard a big, line. That's a big confidence kill, too. If, if Rand can capitalize and score here, it's going to be a much tighter game than we thought. Rin is only one touchdown away from scoring. That's a hole! Keeper on the play for Owens. Flag flies from the backfield. Seems like maybe a holding call on <laughs> yeah, Rin. I would have to guess a hold. Oh, uh, there, there goes yeah. another flag. That's going to be a personal foul, number five for Rin. Let's we'll see what he, uh, the call is. So they're going to – they might be stacking on. That might be a 25-yard loss for Rin. Yeah, like they might have been, you know, talking a little bit on That's that sideline. Pretty. It's getting a little chippy here. Unsportsmanlike uh, conduct on, on the <gasps> Hurricanes. Yep, yep, they call it on both. So, yeah, that'd be minus 25 for Wren. Yeah, they'll back it all Almost the way. Right back to where they was. Yeah, all the way to the 45-yard <laughs> so line. That's huge for BHP. And let's just say it's going to be first down and quite a little ways to go. Uh, looks like about 35. That's, that's something you got to be extremely disciplined on. That's just that's that's really bad sportsmanship, and uh, you really put your team in a bad spot there doing something like that. Yeah, and Trey Horn is checked into the game at quarterback now yeah, for Owens. Yeah, you got to uh, learn how to keep your composure sometimes As in certain spots like that. Ram will come out, stack wide receivers in the shotgun. First down and 35 yards to go. Penalties really just killing both teams, but dramatically for Wren on this drive. Fumble the snap. Horn's going to have to fall on it. And he's going to be thrown down in the backfield. That's number nine, Travion DeVoe. And thrown down around the Even east. more yards back. This is insane. It just back, feels like Wren Back just down to the 49 now. So now Wren's, not a, now Wren's back in their own territory. It just feels like Wren is making too many mistakes. It really try to beat BHP it feels like it feels like Ren's driving the ball it just feels like they're just keep making mistake after mistake with penalties and just yeah so now we have second down and 41 Owens and Jemias Glenn is back on Owens another sack for down loss. at the 39 Owens checks back into the game for Horn that I don't is know just what he was insane. doing that's yeah, yeah. Jemias Glenn on the sack he is showing off his incredible speed as well as his strength. So Back to the it 39. It's third, third down, down and 51, 51 yards to go for Red. They're going to they're gonna need a prayer and then some. This, they want to get this, this conversion. It's this is third extremely, and extremely rare. <laughs> oh, it takes a snap here on third down. He's going to look to throw. There's not much you can do here. Yeah, you might be able to catch that ball. Fires one. That's a good catch to get it down. Mark down. I, I don't think he was down there, but they did call him down. He might he might have uh, deserved a little extra five yards. He did he did stay up on his feet, didn't hit his knee, didn't hit the ball, yeah, and he didn't hit his butt. He only uh, grazed uh, the BHP player, but they did they did mark him down, and you can hear some commotion from the Rand sideline. And now it's going to be third, fourth, fourth down, a little bit more manageable here. Fourth from the um, 
Fourth 36, 4th and 25 is a little bit more manageable than what they a had. A little bit more manageable, <laughs> but I, I still wouldn't. Owens is going to look to throw here on 4th down. Right. He's going to fire a deep shot. That, Not the prettiest of passes, and it's a, incomplete. That's a brave, brave pass there. Firing in the, the range of two BHP defenders. I mean, they had no other choice. But yeah, I mean, it would have it would have been not all that smart of a play for they, BHP to try to intercept that. That would have yeah. lost field position. They, they probably would have had a better chance of at least going for the field goal there, at least trying to get some points. That would have been an awfully long field goal, though. It would have, but they. It, and with it's, this, it's, it's more ideal than going for fourth and twenty-five. Being in no man's yeah. land. Punish baby's offense yeah. will come out first and ten from their own 36. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left in the shotgun. Kind of amazing how you can get almost 30 yards as BHP's gonna take a timeout here. And if you don't if you don't know what no man's land is, no man's land is con uh, considered like uh, when it's too close to the end zone to punt the ball, but it's too far away to kick a field goal. So you have no other option but to at least either go for the field goal and take a risk or go for the go for the fourth down conversion. It's a little bit Typically, it varies, too, by the level of football. In the NFL, there's not really a no-man's land there because kickers can well, yeah, make 55-yard yeah. field goals. But in high school, a lot of kickers don't have that leg on. Right. So even, even, even sometimes in college, Yeah, even in that. college, you see that a good bit. But especially in high school, you know, once you get kind of down there between the about the 40 to the 20, 25, it's kind of um, too far to... Um, As um, BHV comes out first and 10 from their own 36 yard line. Two wide receivers in the shotgun for Pendleton. Takes a snap. He'll hand it off here right at the That's gut. That's Burns. That's he's, Burns. He's still going. Uh, dragged he's finally down. brought down. That's number 18. Shavis Edwards bringing him down. He's dragged down at the 48 and the ran territory. First and 10 Bears. Even with Ren changing the, this like very heavy uh, bo like box package almost, they're still just destroying them at the line of, line of scrimmage. I, I could imagine uh, the offensive line has got to well coach up on how to defend this uh, nickel formation that Ren's decided to put in. First down keeper here, Pendleton. And a nice gain there across the 45 to about the 43-yard line. Good little run. Now we, we got some action. Was like number, number 15. Number 34 for Wren is Nevada uh, Billups. Pushing up on some BHP players. And try to separate him. That was Adam Hilton for the um, Hurricanes. Again, you just got to have really good sportsmanship in games like this, or else I mean, you're, it, just, it, you're, it, you're just putting your team at jeopardy. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Of course, you know, you got emotions. It's a huge region, region game and a huge rivalry here between these two. And so, hand it off right at the gut. He is gone. That's Marquise Henderson, Henderson uh, once again. BHP. He 43 is yards. insane. He is insane in this game. There's a there flag is a flag down. down. It seems like 40. that will be coming back. Uh, holding on the offense. And BHP is very unhappy here. Felt as if uh, some of the coaches up there felt like in this press box felt like an earthquake <laughs> was going on. <laughs> Sooner or later, if this game keeps going like this, this, this whole thing's going to collapse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll back BHP way back yeah. to the 50. It's kind of felt like both teams have really just kind of imploded on themselves. Yeah, you just got to be a little bit more disciplined in games like this. We've seen the sportsmanship starting to slip a little bit, but especially with the holds and the. Um, other various calls. Seems like uh, Marquise is over there wanting, to, wanting them to run the play again. Same play. He feels like he can do it again. We'll have to see if Ren's ready he's for it this time. He's over there signaling to the coaches to run it back. Oh, they will give it to him the cut. And, and he, he gets a good game. A little bit of... A little bit of confusion there. Yeah. Brought down around the... Um, I'll gain a couple down about the 47. So... 48 is where they'll mark him. So BHP back to their original line of scrimmage. It's third and 10. Tough spot for BHP. They're like, going to take out Jace Rents for uh, Malik Pickens. Yeah, they'll substitute three guys out. Brant Holtzqual. 
And Eli Strickland both check into the game as receivers. This is another third one of those big third down conversions we Looking were talking about. Looking to throw about. here, Pendleton rolling to the oh, right. And there's a holding call in the backfield, so no matter what Pendleton's able to do here, it won't really matter. But Pendleton is able to get oh. it down to about the 40 or 39 yard line. But it looks like number. Uh, we got a rim player a little slow to get up, but it does look like there's a hold in the backfield. There may be a hold on the defense and the offense. That may be an offset penalty. We see number 65, Jackson, Jackson Hall, Hall. Uh, tugging on the backside of. Um, Looks like there are two. Yeah, there's rim two rim players down. Yeah. Uh, one of them, AJ. Number kinda, two, Jaden Wilson cream. Abrams. AJ showing his. Uh, very versatile ability being a quarterback. It looks is, like number two is okay. Yeah, he's able. It looks like he's getting up, and trying to walk off. But Eight. it looks like there's a little bit more of a serious problem out there. Number two might have hit himself uh, where no man wants to be hit, <laughs> I believe. But hopefully, number twenty-two so, is okay. They might call. be Malik Pickens or Malik, not Malik Pickens, uh, Malik Woodruff. For the Hurricanes, a little slow to get up. I'm having trouble seeing the number. He is I taking the call off. Two hold calls on BHP. I don't know. It should have been. You can't stack those up. So I'm, you, that's can what I'm enforce, you can only enforce. You can only enforce one of them. I thought. Yeah. See, they've. I don't know where, what they're doing with the position of the ball. That is number 23, actually. They. Uh, Judd Ellison, who was slow to get up for red, but he's walking off under his own power. So hopefully, nothing too serious for either one of these players. But as of right now, the ball's standing at the 35 of BHP. I don't know how they could be third down and 27. Yeah, I don't. It's probably because it was from the spot of the foul. It, that that's, this seems more like that. Yeah, because even then, it's still quite far away from where the spot of the foul is. He did. I will say, I did it, have it, it was, pretty, it was pretty right far around, back. It, it was right around the 52, but it's only a 10-yard penalty. Yeah. We'll back him all the way up to the 35. BHP coming out two wide receivers in the shotgun. Third and 27. Let's see what BHP can do here. Play action. He's going to look the penalty going to look the throw here. Standing tall in the pocket. A fire one. That's uh, incomplete. Uh, I don't know if he was just throwing it away or if he was trying to get out to number 11 to Terry's Burns. BHP is going to bring the punt team out. Yeah, fourth and 27. So that's, that's two drives in a row from both teams that penalties have really, really ruined everything. And keep an eye on the clock now. We've only had two drives, and we've already killed about 10 minutes of clock here in this third quarter. It's insane. Yeah, especially with BHP, you Mind know. You, we did have a touchdown called back and a lot of, a yeah, lot a of lot, penalties. A that lot BHP of penalties. held the ball for As quite a while there. Strickland will punt here. Fair catch is called for and made over the shoulder by Nick Morgan around the 32, and that's where Ren will set up first and 10. That was oh. a very difficult catch there. That was – I, kind of a yeah, bold, bold move yeah, by Nick. At that Nick. point, if it's starting to go over your head, you might, probably, you might probably, want to let it go. Yeah, you'd probably be a good most, idea just to let it go. Most players would let it go. I don't, that, was, that was pretty bold, but it worked pretty impressive. Favor, it's pretty impressive. Definitely kind of interesting move for Ram. We've talked about this before. Nick Morgan's their punt returner. He's a linebacker. You right. don't see linebackers return punts. He is quite a small linebacker, but he is very, very powerful. Yeah, he's, he, he's he does. He has proven that he deserves that spot. Yeah, he, he's certainly been able to field the punts cleanly. He's probably one of the better players at that. And that might be why he's in the position as Owens leads his team back out on the field. Rick he, comes out, four wide receivers stacked. He's definitely gun. a very athletic uh, young man. And, um, and he's met right, right about at the line of scrimmage. He's very fast to be a linebacker. He's very fast to be a linebacker. That's number 54, Jeremiah Brooks on the tackle. Gain of about a yard for the Hurricanes. Second and nine coming up. Jeremiah Brooks, very incredibly strong young man. He's only a junior, and he's squatting around 505 Owens pounds. Owens' pass is complete. That's a first down. That is out to number 80, Mitchell Guru. I haven't caught his name too much this season, but anyways, it is a first down for the Hurricanes. Out across the um, 45 to about the 48. Ran fast again. They'll give it up here. Malachi Hill right up the gut. Hill powering his way down into BHP territory. Still going. I don't know what. Down uh, to about the 44. Trevion DeVoe was doing there. He was just in the backfield kind of standing there watching him as he ran away. Usually he sets back on that play and waits for the ball to meet him. But, I mean, if you're back there and you see the ball going the opposite way, you're usually – want to go after that. 
It, lo it looks like uh, whenever Ren isn't really basically hurting themselves, they're driving the ball pretty well. Yeah. Uh, Owens' pass is complete and out of bounds immediately. That will get a first down. Out, that was complete out to uh, Trey Horn. BHP's definitely 40. getting a little lazy on their uh, pass defense. They do have a number of their backups in, actually. Yeah, they're back there now at the 40-yard uh, line. First and 10, Ren in the shotgun, four wide receivers. Handed off right up the gut. This is uh, Trevon West, and West... Man, moving it right down the field here. West got it down some to close the, to the 32. Some of the Ren big boys showing, getting some love now. Number 53 over there, pancaking uh, Malik Pickens. And we talked about Malik being a very, very strong individual early on and just that over there getting manhandled up front. Carson Powell on the pancake. Ren coming out four wide receivers in the shotgun again. Second and three. They'll hand it off here. West and again. He's thrown in the background, backfield. Good we play. Have too soon. Malik Pickens gets up with a little bit of fire and makes that tackle right there. And again, that's number 56, Malik Pickens. This game is being won and lost really at the, really at right. the line of scrimmage. And Four yeah. fingers go up. It's the start of the fourth quarter. A very fast third quarter comes to an end with BHP still leading 27 to 20. Rand, however, does have the football driving down deep into BHP territory. They'll have it third and three from the 33 as it's two teams flip sides of the field. It's really been an impressive game. The defense has really stepped up here in the second half, yeah, especially. Yeah, I, I definitely say after the start, the defenses have really done a great job. Um, from both sides. Yeah, both sides. It really, it started with about three, four minutes left in the first half, and then the second half, we haven't even seen any points on the board. Of course, we had a BHP touch, and that was called back. Those two interceptions at the very beginning of the game may have very well been the difference maker in this one. Yeah, most of the time, if you win the uh, turnover battle, you win the game. You win the game. But we don't want to speak too soon. There's, we are facing fourth quarter, and everything changes in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and Rand has been able to move the ball pretty well in this drive. Let's see if the the break by the end of the quarter has got BHP a little bit more, you know, ready to go here. Looks like the, the pace was kind of getting to the defense there a little bit as Rand will come out four wide receivers in the gun. Third and three. Takes the snap. Owens fires one. That is incomplete. incomplete. Rand Silent looking for a flag. There will not be one. That was some pretty good defense by the defensive back there. It was. He got there and just made that PBU. And that's going to be fourth and three. Let's see what Ren probably going to go for this kind of out there in no man's land. Big defensive play here. Big play in this ball game. Ren really needs this one. On for it on fourth. This has been about half and half for Ren uh, with fourth down conversions. And the shotgun four hours here is for Owens. Takes the snap. He's going to look to throw here. He's going to step up. He's going to fire one. That is caught out to the 20. Just firing it in there, that tight, willing, that tight window to C.J. Willingham out to the 20, and that's a first down for the Hurricanes and a gain of 13. That was some poor pass defense right there by BHP. I don't know what they were thinking on that one, just leaving them wide open like he that, wasn't, I would kind say of backing the, off. I would say the defensive black played that very well. Just he, he, he it was sort a good of backed ball off towards catch, the end really. there. Hand off, and that's, that's that, Glenn. Yeah. Very close Again. to a horse collar there, but Glenn able to get just a, the outside of the jersey, bringing down Trevon West. Showing off just how powerful he is. And there, yeah, then he gets a word from the ref saying, uh, no more of that one, or he will call it on him. <laughs> Second down and 11, coming up for the 21, loss of a yard. Rand comes out, trips to the right here. Four wide receivers in the gun. Owens going to look BHP to throw. And Jeremiah Brooks in the backfield with Fires some pressure. One that's incomplete. Owens looked like he's diving for a penalty. None was called. And it's going to be third and 11 coming yeah, he up. Kinda, he he kind of flopped on that yeah. one a little bit. That was a little overdramatic. You can even see the ref is gesturing towards that kind of Sometimes, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to win, you know what I'm saying? If that means you got to right, take a penalty, right. hey, get you some yards, get you some yards. All right, third and 11 for the 21. BHP fans starting to make some noise. 
Trips to the right here, four wide receivers in the gun. Owen's gonna look to throw here. Looking, looking, firing one, that is, he caught it! It's caught, that's a first down, down inside the 10. Nazi row on the reception. First and goal coming up for the Hurricanes. That was a really, that was put in just a really tight window. That was a really good ball, really good catch. And the defender was there to make the play, just. He was, that was a very impressive catch. Hand off, right at the gut, Hill into the end zone, touchdown, Wren. They score. And with 10.52 left in the ball game, we're an extra point away from a tie. It's 27-26. Good run right at the gut by Malachi Hill. And the speed, I think, of Wren's offense, the pace that they go at was just too much for BHP's defense to handle. And we got ourselves. Let's see what Wren tries to do here. As trying on to attempt the PAT, we'll have number 19, JT Wingington. He's already missed one in the ball game, so not an automatic uh, give me here, but. Let's see if he can make this one. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up. And it's good. It's good. With 10.52 left in the ball game, we are all tied at 27 between Ren and BHP. We've had a great game yet again here on the Pulse Sports Network. We couldn't ask for some better games so far this season. We've had some real good ones. Yeah, it seems like sometimes in the past, we've, we've had some some games that were blowouts. and uh, Yeah, but we've, we've had our fair share of some really good games this season. Of course, we had that big Ram powdersville game early on in the season that was a 10-9 final, but a very exciting 10-9 game. And the uh, difference in that one was uh, an extra point, was it not? Yeah, it was an extra point that was missed by um, Ren. All tied up with uh, about 11 <laughs> minutes left to go in the ball game. And like Hunter said earlier, Powdersville capitalized on that game because of their turnovers. Uh, they they yeah, won that turnover battle and they won that game. Powdersville just really came through in the clutch in that game. Uh, we've had some other good ones too as um, kicking off deep will be number 32 Lucas Reed we'll have um, number 4 Eli Strickland and number 18 that is Marquise Henderson back deep to return for the Bears we had a really great game last week a 42-35 final with Berea really coming out surprising both me and Hunter with the way they played that's a good kick a high pooch kick Flags will fly, and this going to be an offsides on the kicking team yet again. I understand you want to get the calls right, but at some point, you just got to let yeah, this go. Uh, yeah. you're, you're just starting to nitpick a little bit on the kicking team. Yeah, mo most of the time, these calls ain't really called on the kicking team, especially if it doesn't make a major difference in the you play. You know, I get it. We've, we've seen some that were pretty blatant, but that, right, one, right. that one was pretty <laughs> – I think you should just let that one go. I, in my I think he was there by a hair. They're just – Yeah. they're all over it tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as we as we will re kick here from the 35 now. An update from uh, the Palmetto Southside game. Uh, Palmetto is currently <laughs> uh, trailing <laughs> Southside 14 21. That was another uh, kind of close one we expected. Ran very careful not to jump off sides again. Going for that same kind of kick. And it's going to be fielded it, by lands it inbounds. 25. That's Eli Strickland. And Strickland's going to be brought out down around the 35. That's where BHU was set up first and 10. It's been a really great game. We've got both sides into it now, too. Got the student sectors really going for both sides. Let's see if BHP can capitalize right here. I feel like if uh, BHP here really tries to not get as many penalties, I feel like they can really drive. I feel like they've been driving the ball very well. It just seems as if they're really shooting themselves in the foot lately here. Bears come out in the shotgun, two wide receivers in that heavy formation. No surprise what BHP is going to do here. They'll hand it off right at the gut. Shaheem Robs has got a hole, and Robs has got a nice little gain down near the stick, still pushing that oh. pile. I kind of let that one go for a little bit. Usually he's supposed to need, uh, have a... Uh, Looks like the mark four progress at the 45. Gain of nine, second and one coming up for the Bears. If they if they let him go down uh, and he goes down before they blow the whistle, they're supposed to mark it where it's at, not forward progress. But I don't, I don't know what they're doing right there. Keeper here, Pendleton on second down. He'll get the first down across the 50. And a good run there. 
down to around the, um, let's say about the 49, 48 yard line is where they're marking. Maybe the 47. Marking down at the 48. That is a first down for the Bears. And the Wren territory now. BHP once again just running it right at them and seeing if you can stop it. So far, outside of the penalties, Wren really hasn't been able to stop it. Yeah, I'd, I'd say BHP's biggest mistakes, or if they're only mistakes, were their penalties. Handoff around the edge is Dentarius Burns, and Burns gets it down to around the uh, 41. He's able to skim himself through a little hole right there, and he seems a little shaken up. Uh, he'll get up. Seems like he just maybe had a cramp or just twisted his ankle or something there. Yeah, but it looks he, like, will, he, yeah. he will be coming off the yeah, field. He'll limp, he'll limp over to the sideline. And they check in number 65, Jackson Hall. That's BHP's star offensive lineman. Uh, committed South, to yeah, South, South Carolina. Carolina commit there too. As BHP will come out in the heavy set, they got it second and three from the 41, two wide receivers. They hand it off here right at the gut. That's Henderson, and Henderson looks like he'll have the first down. Down to about the um, 38. Let's we'll see the exact spot, but. BHP's has been running the ball straight down uh, Ren's defense. Straight and down the throat. That's. That's how BHP likes to yeah, run the that's ball. Yeah, that's how BHP's played. So um, as the if Bears they, get the first down can, down to the 38. If they can pound it in there, they'll, they'll pound it in there as much as they can. They're not that they're, – it's, it's not necessarily that you don't know what's coming. It's just so hard to stop. It's kind of like an option offense. And they're giving to Marquise that's again a little bit of confusion on where he was going to go with the play. Marquise – or Henderson is able to get it down across the 30. These BHP backs Gain just don't want to go down. Yeah, just, I mean, powerful running through these rim players and the, off the line's getting a great push. Really doing a good job of just uh, moving those feet. And like I said earlier in the game, it's kind of like watching the triple option. You know exactly what they're going to do, but you just can't stop it. BHP does have a very, very good uh, weight program led by uh, Coach Kevin Smith. Um, he's had a, a lot of experience in the weight room and he even had offers Pendleton to be... Will keep right out the middle. He's got it down near the 20. Brought He's down uh, to the 21. Coach, Coach Smith has even had offers to be uh, weightlifting coaches for various of NFL teams, including uh, Houston Texans and multiple others. Brought down at the 21-yard line, first and 10, BHP. I'll stick in that heavy set. And off right at the middle. Henderson, Marquise Henderson. He's gone. He seems like he BHP. will be gone. And there the are Bears. no flags on the play. BHP scores once again. That's Marquise Henderson, number 18. This is really his night. He is really showing off. This is just a highlight real game for him. Bears pull out in front. 33-27 pinning the PAT with 7.32 left in the ball game. And a great drive again from BHP, especially running the football as Peter Bertoni will be on to attempt the PAT. And uh, if you if you were tuning in earlier on in the season when BHP was facing off Powdersville, then you would notice that Marquise wasn't a running back back then. They uh, they they implemented Marquise as a running back um, not not that long ago, but actually a couple weeks ago, and uh, he's actually been dominating in the backfield. So, Bear, Bear fans really excited here, getting on their feet, making some noise. As the PAT was up a good with 7.32 left in the ball game, BHP pulls out in front, 34-27. If there's a player of this game, it's, I, I wouldn't even give it to a single player. I'll just give it to the whole offensive line yeah, for BHP. Yeah, if, just, if we had to, though, it would be Marquise Henderson. I'd say Henderson, but the offensive line's really set that up he for is. Henderson. They, they so. are, they are, but Henderson is insane with the with the yards this game. It's, it's kind of obvious who you have to give it to. But I, I, I would agree with you, Hunter. If, if it if it was up to me, I'd, I'd give it to the whole offense. Whole offensive line, the big boys up front is what the stars that nobody talks about that makes these holes. And right. BHB, everybody's had holes to run through in this one. Not only has it been a really exciting high scoring game, but this second half just seems like it's flown by with how the clock's been moving. Feels like they're taking no time. Been a lot of uh, more run plays on, especially for Ren. Yeah, I mean, I mean BHP's ran the ball the whole game, but 
BHP definitely needs a huge stop right here. Let's see what they can do. Peter Bertoni on the kick deep for the Bears. Back deep to return. We'll have what looks like Trevon West and CJ Willingham for the Hurricanes. Big kick. Nice kick. We floated around the 14. That is a West. West, nice hole. West, he's got his face. West clears the kicker. He is gone. Touchdown, Hurricanes. Trevon West takes it to the house. Man, we, we've seen a lot of uh, <laughs> big special team plays lately for these games we've had been calling lately. Trevon West, 85 yards on the kick return and, BH and ran an extra point away from a tie and answers BHP immediately. This isn't necessarily good for uh, BHP's offense as they just came off the field. Usually you want your defense out there for a little bit <laughs> so you can uh, at least get the, get the rest that you need. Um, they're going for that water bucket again. I hope... I hope they don't try something funky here and go for a, a two-point. That's taking a huge risk late on in the game. Yeah, it looks like they'll bring on Wigington and just attempt the PAT to tie it up. That's that's the smarter smarter Ordell to go with. Ren, Ren really just answered right away. <laughs> BHP's crowd, this is the loudest they've been all night, wanting them to miss that, but he does make yeah, that. Yeah, he does boot so it through. So that does tie the game 34-34 with seven minutes and uh, 16 seconds left in the fourth quarter. This is a really, really tight game, and yeah. both teams are starting to turn this one up. Yeah. We've had a – it's been a great game back and forth. Both teams have a big crowd here, and they're both getting really into it here. You Probably the loudest game I've been to all, all year, I'd have it to is, say. It is, it is. I would say the same thing. You can never really count Ren out because how explosive they can just score in like a like a blink of an eye. It's definitely one of the more interesting games, too. And I definitely agree with that. You know, we've seen some pretty good ones, but this is on up there. Yeah, we've seen some <laughs> huge diversity in this game. Um, two interceptions from BHP. We've had multiple, multiple game-changing penalties. Uh, we've had a fourth down and 54. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do believe the actual was, was like it was, it was third, third down, down it was 51. Third and 51. But, but still, uh, you don't you don't get that. That doesn't happen in a normal game. Right. As we've, Lucas we've Reed had, would be on the. We've had a lot. Check that. That's not that's Wigginton to kick deep. Usually we see Reed back there. Seems like there's some confusion on the kickoff team. Know what they're going to be doing here. Kind of interesting. They don't have their normal uh, deep man or kickoff man back there. And it's an onside kick. And Rand got the ball, but I don't think it went 10 yards. But they're giving it to Rand anyways. That, that ball did not go 10 yards. That refs are going to have to talk. Refs are talk yeah, refs are going to talk this one out. That ball, that ball didn't go 10 yards. And. Uh, if, if you don't, if you don't know, you can't, you can't touch the football before it goes 10 yards on an onside kick, and that that would result in a penalty, and uh, BHP would have the ball there. We'll have to but see what they call, but that's a pretty bold call by Ren. That, that's a pretty obvious call too. Yeah, with the that's, changing kickers, and they're, they're giving it to Ren, and BHP is not going to be all that happy about that. You can, cert you can certainly hear that up here in the press box. Yeah, that's uh, a very questionable play uh, very, call. Very, very, very questionable call. That's – I don't know about that one. That's uh, that's, that's a little too much out there. I will, say, I will say you don't see um, the coaches down there giving them too much grit as BHP fans get on their feet and start to make some noise. Trips to the right here for Wren. They'll hand it off here around the edge. That's Malik Hill. And Hill's brought out of bounds around the 45. He'll gain about three, second and seven coming up for the Hurricanes. It definitely feels like uh, the momentum is definitely on Ren's side for sure right now. And uh, don't forget to don't forget to catch us next week at BHP where BHP takes on Daniel. Depending on the results of this game, that could be for the region. As um, Owens will There's keep here right up the gut. In the backfield, huh? Across the 40-yard line. About, Mark down about the 39. He's going to be about a yard short. Third and one coming up for the Hurricanes. Oh, 
Three wide receivers in the shotgun. Trips to the right here for um, Owens. I'll hand it off here right at the gut, that's Hill, and he'll get the first down and then some dragging BHP defenders down across the 35. This BHP defense has seemed to sit down a little bit, and they need to step it up in order to come out with a win for this game. And so they'll mark them around the 30, what's it, the 31-yard line. First and 10 Hurricanes. Ran not being as quite as quick as we've seen as they come out trips to the right here, four wide receivers. Yeah, they're trying to run that clock out and score. Handoff Hill, and he's going to be met. It's number 25. Yeah, that is uh, Jordan Johnson, the first guy to meet him for the uh, Bears. He'll gain a few, however, out to about the, looks like the mark about the 26. Give him about four yards. Actually, a nice play. Uh, Check that second and five to give him five yards. It's not actually a nice play to get five yards. As Rimble come out, trips to the right here. Four wide receivers in the gun. Clock ticking now within under five and a half minutes to play. Hand it off here. Hill bounces to the outside. Hill. And he's going to be right out of bounds as a first down for the Hurricanes. Malachi Hill. Out to about the, um, let's say about the 13 is where it looks like they'll mark him. It really seems as if uh, Ren's, Ren's uh, run game here has really stepped up here in the fourth quarter and the third quarter especially. Ren will go fast, I hand it off right up the gut and getting it out to about the 10, gain of three. Um, it looks like that was Trevon West on the carry. Second and seven coming out for the Hurricanes from the 10. Trips to the left here, four wide receivers in the gun for Owens. He's gonna hand it off here right at the gut. West, West, he's in! Touchdown, Hurricanes! Trevon West pulls the Hurricanes out in front. 40 to 34, pitting the extra point. And this was all set up by that question of a call on the onside kick. But Rian is able to take advantage of the uh, game-changing shift, the shift in the game. And uh, Rand pulls out in front, 40 to 34, with pinning the extra point with 4:41 left in the ball game. Coming definitely, up to attend the PAT is JT Winkington. Definitely a game-changing drive. Actually, three drives. <laughs> they get three drives back to back to back. Winkington boots that one through, and That's with 4:41 good. left in the ball game, your score: Rand win 41, BHP 34. It's the first time Rand leads this game, actually. Yeah, after the way this one Late started, it, it looked like BHP might run away with this one in the first, but Ren has done a great job hanging in there. And really, the onside kick and the kick return by Trevon West are two biggest plays of the game so far. Ren Fateful really getting excited here. Still four, uh, four minutes and 41 seconds left in this game, so there's plenty of time for BHP to get downfield and score and yeah. make a stop, hopefully. Yeah, there's. I would agree with that. With BHP having the Bears did have to use one of their timeouts, so they only have two left in the ball game. I will say BHP is not necessarily the best of teams when it comes to the two-minute drill because of the way they run their offense. Plenty of time left, though, so they could just yeah. do what they've been doing all game. Lucas Reed will kick Seems deep. Seems like they will be. Yeah, it looks like they'll actually be kicking deep this time. I mean, I would take that with a grain of salt, but. Reed will come on to kick. It'll they, be did, they did go for that on side last time, so. Henderson and Strickland back deep to return for the Bears. I could imagine they'd go for the same thing. It seems like he will kick it deep. Yeah, good, great kick. That one actually sells over the goal line, and so BHP will set up first and 10 for their own 20. I mean, yeah, it was a great kick. It went it the goal line, over kick. the goal line over the, on the fly. You don't see that too much in high school. Reed certainly got a good leg on him. As BHU was set up first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. We got 441 left in the ball game. Bears have two timeouts, trailing 41-34. And what's been a great game up to this point. Uh, keep in mind, this game has a lot of playoff implications for both teams. Yes, um, the winner of this game would likely be able to host a home playoff game. As on first down, the handed off right up the gut. That is um, number 11, Dentarius Burns, and he's met 
close to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. He's met by number 16, Nick Morgan. Actually, they will give him about a yard, second and nine coming up for the Bears from the 21. It, it really feels like uh, Rams really kind of stepped up here and said, hey, I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna get bullied this whole game. I'm yeah. Gonna to, I'm gonna stop y'all here and make y'all win the game by passing the ball. Second and nine for the 21. The hand it off, or whistles will blow before flags down. Might have had a false start. It may be on the defense. Yeah, it is a false start on the offense. Offense. So that'll back it up five, and I'll be second and 14 now from the 16-yard line. This isn't good for BHP. Yeah. It's another one of those uh, disciplinary, disciplinary issues. BHP's not the team to be playing too far behind the sticks. Again, they can certainly throw it, but it's not necessarily their strong suit on the offensive side of the ball. Second and 14 from the 16, clock ticking. Flags fly, it's a trick play. Looking for Bill, it's intercepted. It's picked up by West, and he's gonna be dragged down. West Actually, is still no, on his won't. feet. Now he'll be dragged now down. Now he's dragged down across the 50, but there are flags down at Lockett. It might be offsides, and we got a ref with a hat off. No, Several that's gonna flags. Be, uh, there's gonna be a player ejected. There's gonna be another flag. Um, it seems like there's gonna be a false start in the backfield. It may be Marquise Henderson. He, he kind of touched his hands to the ground before the ball was snapped. So that, that may have caused the flags in the backfield. And then there was an interception. Um, and then I didn't quite see what happened for the ref to throw his hat off. But when a ref throws his hat off at a player, that means that player will be ejected automatically. And, and he's uh, gonna go talk it's usually to pretty the, bad. Yeah, he's talking to the Ren coach. So yeah, Jeff Tate didn't look very happy with that play. So, so they obviously Ren will decline the penalties and uh, they'll take that. Um, and like an illegal shift is what they called in the backfield. So Ram will take over first and 10. Yeah, that, that's caused by number 18, Marquise Henderson, touching his hands to the ground. I don't know why why he did that. And uh, I don't see who they, if they took anyone out. It but didn't look like they caught anything um, that was ref, worthy of an ejection. I don't know why the ref threw his hat off. Maybe he'd That's, already thrown one of his <laughs> flags. That's the only thing I can yeah, guess. Yeah, but usually that means that player is ejected if he is uh, throwing it at a player. As um, Ram will come out, trips to the right here. Four wide receivers in the gun. They got 331 left in the ball game, leading 41-34. They'll hand it off here right at the gut. That is uh, Malachi Hill. Hill brought He's down. He's really turned up in the fourth quarter. Man, it's, it's really felt like Ren's kind of, they've kind of like clutched up here. Here late in this game, they have, it, it, it may have been that uh, that punt that they have uh, recovered themselves, the, the rim punt that they recovered, and then the onside kick they recovered. It that, that may have been the the turning point for Ren in this game. Second and six coming up with the 42 for the Hurricanes to come out trips to the right here. Four wide receivers in the shotgun. BHB's got to be aware of the clock now, ticking down within. Three minutes, Hill on, on the carry, he's got space, Hill tripped up. Tripped up and down. Down, I mean, that's a big play, because he was, I mean, if he was able to stay on his feet, he would have probably took it to the house. Hill's uh, slow to get up. I don't know if that's, that might be very serious, as he's not. He kind of hit his head a little yeah, hard when he Yeah, and he, he doesn't like he's, you know, really moving all that well. He is moving his arm, yeah, that's a good sign. Laying flat on oh. his back as they uh, try to stretch his leg out. It may be a cramp, so they're sitting there stretching. He was about one one step away from taking that all the way to the house. Oh yeah. If that he was, was, if, was if, a, if, if if he would have took that there, that that may have very well been the the dagger in the coffin. That would have been the nail pretty in the much coffin. it. Yeah, as Hill's still um, training staff's gonna check on him. BHP will get a chance to discuss their offensive strategy or their defensive strategy. I mean, it's wouldn't this can't be surprising to them that Ren's trying to run the football at him as Hill's going to be helped off the field with a heavy limp. In fact, he's putting no pressure at all on that right leg. That looks like it'll probably be a very serious injury. Or at least may, serious. May have pulled a hamstring yeah, there. At least serious enough to where... Um, that's usually what happens. He did, he did like he elongated that leg and 
he could have very well pulled his hamstring. Yeah. No matter what it is, he'll probably not return for the rest of this game as Trevon West will take over the running back duties in the backfield. Trips to the left here, four wide receivers for the Hurricanes in the shotgun. Don't take him for granted either. He's very powerful as well. Yeah, West, the guy who just made the big interception to um, a very great defensive player as well, handed off to West right up the middle, and BHP's defense is able to come through this time. That looked like Brock Turner, number 10, back there, as well as a host of other Bears. VHP sideline don't seem like they're into this game. This very well, they can make a comeback still in this game. Yeah, they need to just try to keep their heads up. Gain of a yard coming up for the Hurricanes. Clock ticking now within two minutes. Seems BHP. like they're going to sit there and wait yeah. for that clock to hold on as long as they can. Hand it off. Clock yeah, out. the West. Like Owens was trying to pull it out there. VHP might need to take a timeout. Yeah, they soon. did. They did take the timeout here. With a minute 48 left, BHU takes their sec second time up. They'll have one remaining. As we will have a third down coming up. This play's very huge here because if, if they get a first down here, I would say it's very hard for BHP to. It, it, yeah, I would think it, this one's a probably going to be over. They, yeah, if, if, if Rand can pull a first down here, it, it would be pretty it, much over. Yeah, it'd be BHP. very hard for them to stop I, I don't see the way because if they, if they get the first down with this run, BHU had to they, take their last time out. Yeah, and it'd be very difficult. Very, if very BHP difficult. would get the ball, if BHP would be able to get the ball back, it'd be with like two seconds right. on and the clock. And there's not a whole lot you can do there. They'd of have course, to go for a deep pass, and even then, that's... That's going to be third down and six coming up from the 38. Both teams head back out onto the field. Big, big play here. BHP's able to hold them. Then um, Bears stay alive. If not... I, I could imagine they'd still go for the fourth down, though. I, I would think so, too. No matter what, this is still a very important play. They'll end around here. Tanazi Rowe bounces to the outside. And he's tripped up. BHP takes a timeout. They took their last timeout. And it's going to be fourth and uh, relatively short. Looks like about two. Bears take their last time out with a minute 41 left in the ball game. This is huge, huge, huge fourth down for both teams. Uh, we always have to remember that. Wren does have a tendency of going for some uh, like trickery plays here, so if yeah. I was the BHP's defense, I would, I would look out for a Be little expecting bit of something there, yeah. yeah. If I BHP's got to be, you know, at the very least, obviously you can't let them get the first down here. That would that would definitely most likely be the ball game. If they got the yeah, first down here. It would. Cuz then I could just run the clock out yeah. immediately. So, and it's fourth and one and I imagine Rim will probably go for this. Considering the fact that they are kind of out there in no man's land at the uh, BHP 33. And not to mention that they, they need to run this clock out. BHP's already used up their last time out. Yeah, so BHP fans got to try to get on their on their feet, make some noise. Very, very big play in this ball game. Fourth and one from the 33. It's a fake. A key and pick. He will get the first flag down in the backfield. Back. Looks like that might be a hold in the backfield, but uh, Owens is able to get the first down. It looks like a... This might be a legal a shift on the penalty. offense. So that's a big penalty on Wren as that's going to negate the first down and back them up five. And they'll have to redo this now, fourth and six. Penalties just killing both these teams in this game. It's going to be fourth down and six from the 38. And Wren will take a timeout. Seems like they may have had some miscommunication there from yep. Wren. I don't see why they would have took the timeout. Just trying to make sure they have the right play call in there. It is going to be fourth and six from the 38. 
as both these teams will discuss. Score updates. Um, Southside leads Palmetto 28-14 in the third, fourth quarter. As you said, uh, Seneca beats Pendleton 64-0. Not really a surprise there. Pendleton's not the best. And yeah. Seneca's had a very strong season so far. As the wind starts to pick up again here. Obviously Seneca coming off with a chip on their shoulder with their huge loss to BHP last week. All right, it's gonna be fourth and six from the 38. Fourth down, most likely the ball game. Both teams head back out onto the field. BHP getting the noise cranked up. Stat wide receivers in the shotgun for Owens. Takes the snap. He's going to look to throw. Let's go fire one. That's too high. To Intercepted. It's picked up. Marcus Anderson. He's got Anderson blockers. He's got blockers. He's so good. He's there. He's going. He's going. going. He's going. Marcus the Anderson. Touchdown. No flags anywhere. Marquis Anderson with a pick, pick six. So with one minute the and down. 16 seconds left in the fourth quarter. This is an amazing game for him. What a turn of events for BHP. What a play for Marquise Henderson. I mean, he's getting player of the week honors for that one. Uh, yes. yes. Even, even if BHP comes off with a loss in this game, Marquise Henderson definitely deserves a title of player of the week, player of the game. He is going insane. BHP's well, going to talk about this. They might be thinking about a two-point conversion here. I, I would just go over the extra I point would, if yeah, I was. I, I would go for the extra point. Play it safe, run this game in the halftime if they can make some quick stops. Because BHP don't have no more timeouts. I'm not sure about that. If I, if I was BHP, I'm gonna try just win the game right here. Well, Rand does still have one timeout, and they can certain they, they they can yeah. throw it. They've shown that ability. They have a downfield passing threat. But, but man, what players. a play by Marquise Henderson. That That's was insane. crazy. Might be one of the best plays I've seen, and definitely probably the clutchest the, play we've seen all year. Yeah, putting the momentum back for BHP too. Uh, they, they're going to take every bit of this as they can, as they're going to uh, see did what have they want to yeah, do. Yeah, did have to use one of these timeouts to try to talk about it. Uh, looks like offense is going to come back out on the field. They're still talking over it. BHP, I mean, the, the play clock's glowing at this point, so the yeah, BHP's got to be. Uh, they're, they're talking over it. They haven't even brought out a kicker or nothing, so it seems like they. They might be thinking about this. Yeah, yeah Pendleton's heading back it. out onto the field. BHP's going to try to win the game right now. I don't know about this one because BHP doesn't have any timeout, so if they can't this get is, the, this. is I kind of uh, uh, like it considering the fact that it's a BHP's offensive. BHP fans need to you know, try to quiet down a little bit. The hand is off here, reverse. Throws it, Pendleton it's incomplete. incomplete. And wins for the hold. As of right now, BHP's going to need an onside kick of sorts if they want to. And it was just under thrown to for Pendleton by Eli Strickland. Again, that's, 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 that's going to be a tough one to right swallow there. if um, BHP can't. I'm not sure why they didn't just run the ball straight down the middle. They've been doing it all night. I don't understand it's why they weren't just. I, it, it's that's. Yeah, they're definitely. Uh, <laughs> some of the uh, BHP coaches are a little upset up there up top. BHP's got to be talking about this over because they, they, they don't have a timeout. They have a minute 16 left. And they need an onside kick or else it's over. I mean, you know, miracles have happened, but, I mean, they got to be talking about their best onside kicks. I mean, what a game this has been. But I, it's, it's got to be hard. It would be hard that, for BHP to lose tough, the game on that. That's a tough play call. Very, very tough play call. I can imagine they're going to go for this onside, and I can imagine Renz going to run the clock out here. If Renz recovers it. If BHP is able to recover it, they will have the ball with pretty decent field position, and they would just need a field goal, and they would win. And I, I Peter Bertoni's had, had his moments this year where he's made some game-winning kicks. We got Renz' student section getting ready to flee the field. This game isn't quite over. Yeah, it looks like the students might be – Wanting to storm the field here as the students head down onto the um near the gate. They got some staff over there. This is the ball game, folks. Peter Batoni will try the onside kick. Let's see what BHP has up their sleeve. If they can't recover, Ren's gonna win it. If not, BHP's hopes are still alive. 
Let's see what they can do here. Here's the kick, and it's going to be squished, and it's going to be recovered, by, recovered Ren. by Ren. That is number 83 falling on it. Landon Skelton and the Hurricanes are going to survive this one, and and Ren, BHP just heartbroken after I, this they game. Should've... I don't know about the play call. That's, I mean, you that's got all on play calling right there. You I, can't, you can't just. That's, <laughs> I, I got to think you, you should have just went for overtime there, in my yeah, personal you, opinion. You have to. That BHP's been dominating the entire game. I, I like uh, the choice of going on it for, uh, it's, for two it's, points, but I don't understand it's very the play bold. call. Though. It's very bold. I've seen BHP but, do it where they've pulled it off, but I've right. also seen BHP do it where, as Ren's going to have to come out, they'll have the ball at the 30. As the Ren students get ready to storm the field here. They're going to – They'll have to, gonna have to take, a, and take a, knee. Yeah, a couple knees, and this one's going to be over. But still, I mean, you got to give credit to these kids, though. This was just a hard-fought game for both teams. These kids played their hearts out tonight as Owens goes down to a knee here. I mean, it's just – it's just got to be heartbreaking for BHB to lose a game like this. But the Bears still do – I mean, they, they do look a much better team than the one we saw early on in the season against Powdersville. They really got it going last week against Seneca. I mean, they were in this game to the last second. But unfortunately for them, just some questionable play calling, some questionable pen penalties, or some questionable calls by the official crew. As Owens goes down to one more knee. And I think that's going to do it. Yeah, that's going to be yeah, game. Yeah, that's going to be the ball game. What an incredible one we had here tonight. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Be sure to uh, catch us next Friday at BHP. They're going to be hosting Daniel, the top in their region. And uh, be sure to catch us next Saturday as uh, we do Boo in the Park. Um, that will be in Williamston. And um, I hope you all have a great night. I'm Joseph Law. Yeah, this has just been an amazing game. I'm Zachary Franks. Thank you, thank you guys for letting us. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for <laughs> listening to us tonight. It's just been a great game. These kids played their hearts out, and both teams deserve mad props. If we could get both teams to win here, we would. But it's Rand coming out on top, 41 to 40, and that's gonna wrap things up for us. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we will see you guys next week at BHP as they host Daniel. Peace oh. out. <laughs>